Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, I'll be doing a full three-player playthrough of Blackout Hong Kong. Now, I will be teaching the rules to this game while we are playing it, and I would like to ask that you turn on the Klingon subtitles so that you can see corrections in case I made any mistakes so that you have a good idea of how the game plays correctly. Now, what's going on in this game is there has been a blackout in Hong Kong, and I believe each player is thematically trying to uh, re-establish uh, connection with everybody out there. They're trying to secure districts, uh, stop looting, and all that kind of thing. But uh, what's really going on here is this is a Euro optimization game where you are building up a bigger and bigger hand of more effective of cards, and every single round there is a little bit of randomness as you roll some dice, and then you use that to acquire the resources that you need in that round. Now there's quite a bit going on here in the game, and I will explain all of it as we go into it, but before we jump in, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, you please consider clicking the like button down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that, and uh, one of the perks is actually voting on one of the uh, playthroughs I make each month, and this is the video that won the month of December, so that's why it's being made. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up for our three different players. Now, we are going to play the game from the perspective of the white player here in the middle, and we are the starting player, and we know that because we have this purple pawn. Now, this isn't just a starting player token. Instead, this shows us also what phase we are in within each given round, because we are all going to play phase one, and then phase two, and then three, all the way up to eight, and we will do all of these in clockwise order. Once we finish the eighth phase, then we will pass this over to the next player in clockwise order, and we are going to keep playing the game until this entire draw deck runs out, and then we are going to play one additional round. So with that in mind, let's now start off the first turn, and we can look down here and see that we are in the roll resource dice and plan cards phase. Well, rolling the dice is pretty self-explanatory, but it's important to note that we need to make sure that we have different symbols showing on all three dice. Now, in this case, we have a tool right here, so we can put that right over here, but then we have two books. Now, whenever there is a duplicate, we simply roll those duplicate ones until we get two different types. We got two books again, and this time we got two water, and now it looks like we got a gas can and a book. So it took a couple rolls there, but now we can see that this is how the resource dice are allocated for this first turn of the game. At this point, it is worth noting that these dice are not identical. We can look at this little cheat card here and see that the yellow die has, it looks like, two gas cans, two water, and two books, whereas the blue die has one of each of the faces, and the red die has a couple tools, a couple water, medicine, and a gas can on it. Now that we've finished rolling the dice, we can move on to the last part of this first round, which involves planning our cards. Now this can happen simultaneously, so every player can take their hand of cards and start planning, and what we are going to do is choose three cards from our hand, and we will put them face down on these three columns in our player area. Now as part of setup, we all had to put a yellow here, a red, and a blue right here, and it's also worth noting that we all have this double blue icon uh, card right here, and a leader card over here in the hospital. Now, when they're in the hospital, we don't have access to them, and the only way to bring them out of the hospital is to play the doctor card right here. Uh, but I think let's go ahead and look at some of our other options, because what happens after we plan is we will then deploy our volunteers and specialists, which effectively means we are going to evaluate the cards that we plan down here. Now, most of the cards in our hand are really simple. We can see this has a single red icon, this one has a single yellow icon, and this one has a single blue icon. And what that means is, if I played this card right here with a single red icon, that means we will gain one resource that is associated with whatever the red die ended up being this round. So that means if we played this card down, then it will generate one tool for ourselves. Now, I'm not sure if we actually want to play this card right down here, uh, and there are a couple things that we need to consider, but the first thing that we should look at are our objectives, because what we do after we evaluate the cards that we choose in our plan is we can then try to complete our goals, and if we look a little bit closer here, we can see all of these orange banners which show various things that we are trying to accomplish. Now, these are pretty simple. This means spend a food and a gasoline to complete this card objective, and this is a food and a medicine. But over here, we have this emergency plan with three different levels on it, and we can see this middle section right here shows two purple cards, a blue, and a yellow. Now, the way that works is we need to have that pattern of cards in one of our columns, not necessarily in that order, but we can see at the start of the game, we just have this one yellow here and a red and a blue. 
So now that we are trying to plan out our cards, we could look to the future and see that we kind of want our purples to be together, and along with a yellow, and down here we have another of these objectives. This wants two purple and two yellow in the same column, and if we do that, as well as spend ten money, we can remove this and then play four cards every round for the rest of the game. So uh, that means you're even more effective and you can do more actions. So with that in mind, I feel like we are somewhat motivated to try and play some purple cards over here to this first column because we do have a yellow card there already and we have two different objectives that we are going for that has both purple and yellow in that spot. So when we come back to our hand, we can see that there are three of these purple cards and I think we want to put one of them down here. And if we look right here, we can see this scout will generate two money for us and let us spend a gasoline or a book in order to gather a GPS token, and I'll explain what those do soon, but I don't think we want to uh, play this card this turn. Uh, we also have this mechanic, which will get us three money, and if we spend a tool, we can get three more money, so that would be uh, six money we could potentially grab. And lastly, we have this doctor, which if we spend one medicine, we can heal back somebody from the hospital. We also generate the victory points that are shown on that card, uh, for instance, two and three, uh, which is definitely nice, and then we gain access to that card going forward. Now, I think this is probably the one we want to go with, uh, so we are going to plant it face down right over here, but it's worth noting that this requires a medicine, and right now, we currently don't have any. In fact, the only thing we start the game with is a single battery, but every battery can be used as a wild resource, so that means effectively we can use this cube as one medicine, or of course as a book, a water, a fuel, uh, etc. around the board. Now, the way we track our resources is if we had a medicine, then these cubes would be hanging out right over here, potentially with some of the cubes of our opponents as well. Now, when we look over here, uh, I think we are just satisfied with using this white battery as a wild to do the medicine for that doctor, so for the moment we're okay. But at this point, we still have to plan two more cards. Now, I think another objective we want to go for is to grab this card from our area, and we know it's going to cost one food and one gasoline. Well, if we look out here, we can see that the yellow die is currently on the gasoline spot. So I think we should go ahead and spend this card right here, which will put one cube into the yellow die spot, which means that will turn into one gasoline. But we also need a food, and unfortunately, none of the dice rolled food this round. Now, we do have ways to get around that, though. At the start of the game, everyone has five of these transport tokens, and in fact, you can get more of these as a free action as often as you want. It just costs you one victory point for every transport token, and you can use these to effectively move a die to an adjacent spot on this wheel just for yourself. So what that means is we can go ahead and use one of these red cards and then plan on using this transport token to turn that tool into a food for ourselves, and that means we will have the gas and the food that we need in order to complete this objective right here. So with that plan in mind, we're going to use both of these cards. But before we can move on, we do have to decide if we are going to play our cards like this or if we will plan them like that. Now, the only reason this really matters is uh, how soon you think you will get those cards back. Because in the uh, one of the later rounds in a given turn, if you are under a threshold of cards in your hand, you will get to draw these cards back into your hand, and you always draw from the column with the most cards. So with that in mind, I think we should put the yellow right here and the red right over here, of course, face down. And the reason for that is because we don't currently have any more yellow cards in our hand, so that means we are likely to pull this one back into our hand sooner and have more flexibility with it. So with that, we have now finished out our three-card plan for this first turn of the game, and once all of our opponents have done their plans, we can then move on. Okay, it looks like we're ready to move on, so we can now go to the second phase of the round, which says Deploy Volunteers and Specialists. As I said before, you can evaluate these in any order you choose. I figure we can start by doing a red uh, volunteer action, and we can also do a yellow single volunteer action. So what that means is we will put one cube into the red zone and one cube into the yellow zone. So the yellow goes right here, and as I mentioned before, we will have this volunteer who is heading over here to the tool zone instead get into the uh, transportation vehicle and drive to one adjacent spot and instead go right there. Now, if that volunteer had multiple activations on it, then all of them would go to the new spot because, of course, they were transported over here to do work. So now that we have put both of these down, we can activate our doctor specialist. And as we know, we have to spend one medicine, but we don't have any. So we will spend this battery instead because it is wild. And now we can see that this is going to heal one person from our hospital and then score the points that are on that card. 
Well, we have two cards to choose from. Uh, this one right here simply does a double blue uh, resource action, which is certainly good. Uh, but the other one is our leader. Now, the leader says when you uh, use them, you will gain one battery, which is a wild resource, and you can activate one checkmark ability. Now, checkmark abilities uh, show up in a couple different ways. Uh, one is by getting these outpost uh, house things down onto the map. You can see a checkmark right there. And if I did that, then as an ability right there, we could spend one tool in order to get three money. Now, I'll explain how these go out onto the map pretty soon here, but you can also get checkmark abilities by completing some of these objectives. For instance, once we complete this emergency plan, we have a checkmark ability of spending one book in order to get three victory points. Now, uh, at the moment, we obviously don't have any check marks to activate, so I think we are going to leave our leader in the hospital, and we will heal up this blue volunteer right here. We can see that means we will generate two victory points, and then we can add this volunteer into our hand and potentially, uh, probably, use them next turn. So we can take those two points, which, for the moment, puts us in the lead. At this point, we have now finished deploying our volunteers and specialists, so that means we can now go clockwise to the next player to do this, although when you're playing with other players, you can usually do this mostly simultaneously. So let's come over here to the green player, and it looks like the first thing they are going to do is put a cube out on the yellow location, and the second thing they will do is put a cube out on the red location. They could, of course, spend transportation tokens to move these around, but they're happy with this setup because at this point, they are now going to reveal their third plan card, and that one is the mechanic. So we can see that is going to get them three money, and then they can spend one tool in order to get three more money, and that is what they're going to do. So by getting rid of this cube, they're going to gather six money right now. This completes their deployment, so now the orange player can do theirs. And it looks like they are going to start off by putting a resource cube on the blue area, as well as the red area. And then they are going to reveal their third card, and this one is the scout. So we can see here they can spend either one gas or a book in order to gather one GPS token, and they have decided to get rid of this book right here, and they can grab this GPS token and put it into the area, and I will explain why this is important pretty soon here, uh, but the last thing the scout does is generate two money for the orange player as well. These can get added into the area, and now everybody has finished doing their deployment. This means we can move to the third phase of the round, and this one involves trying to complete our goals. Now we've talked about what we're planning on doing this turn already, and I think we should now go ahead and evaluate it. Uh, we were looking at both of these two options, and the one we decided to go with was trying to complete this objective. This means we're going to have to spend one food and one gas. And it looks like we were able to successfully plan ahead and make that happen. This means we have successfully completed this objective, and if we look down here, we can see our rewards. Now this reward says we will add this card into our hand so that we can use it ongoing. Also, it will be worth two points to us at the end of the game as long as it is not in our hospital. Now the other thing we gain is the ability to put one of our cubes down onto a red location on the map. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at the map and see what our different options are. Now as part of setup, we put a cube right over here, and when you add new cubes to the map, you of course have to match the stipulation of the reward, so we know this has to go to a red spot, and we have to put this cube down onto a location that is adjacent to a previous uh, cube of our color. So that means right now we are only adjacent to blue, red, and purple, but we know that we have to put this down into a red spot, so this spot is totally fine for us. Now it is worth noting that you can spend transportation tokens to cheat a little bit and move one farther away for every token that you use, but again, it costs one victory point uh, per token to gather more of these, although everybody does start with five of these, which is a decent amount. Now I think we may as well put our cube down right here, and there are a couple things that we are trying to plan ahead uh, towards with these cubes. Now the base thing is we are trying to fully surround a region with uh, our cubes. Now, if we, for instance, had a cube in every single spot on this large region right here, then at that moment, we will score that region, and we will get to put one of our little houses down, and that will unlock one of our checkmark abilities, which I'll talk a little bit more uh, later, but we've already mentioned it at least once. Now, whenever a region is scored, you then count up the number of cubes that you have that are touching that region, and you look to this graph, and you get that number of points. But everybody else who also has cubes touching that region will also count up all of theirs and then get those points as well. So the main reason to try and fully surround it is to try and get these houses down, which will uh, give you more actions. 
Now, at this point, we have put both of these here, uh, and we can see that both of them are adjacent to, to three different regions, and we are hoping that we can um, have as many cubes as we uh, as possible adjacent to these regions when they score to potentially score a cube multiple times. Now, all of this will make a lot more sense as we actually fill out the board and start to score things, but for now, we can move on. We have now taken our reward by putting our cube right down here. And we now have the option of completing more objectives if we are able to. Now, this one right here costs a food and a medicine, and we don't have either of those things right now, so we're definitely not doing that. Uh, we can look onto our uh, emergency plan. Uh, we do not currently have two purple, a blue, and a yellow card within a given column. Uh, we're trying to sort of work towards that, but we're definitely not there just yet. Uh, we also have this one right here, which says we have to have cubes in a connected line between the two cities on the map that have Ds on them. If we come back out here, we can see that this cube placement also helps us with that because there's a D right here and a D right there. So that means in order to complete that objective, we need one, two, three more cubes kind of in that zigzag in order to connect both of those cities and get some bonuses. Now, if we look at this emergency plan a little bit closer, we can see that if we did that, we would get five money, which is certainly great. And you can actually cash this card in uh, when, after you completed just one of these different objectives. You don't have to do all three of these. Uh, and you might want to do that if you want to uh, unlock the ability to use this checkmark ability at the top sooner. But either way, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, the last of the options on this card involves scouting tiles. You have to have uh, a victory point scouting tile, and it looks like we also need to have a medicine scouting tile. But I haven't talked about scout tiles at all yet, and I will very soon. So at this point, I think we should move on and see what the green player does for their objectives. And it appears they are going to do this one right here. That one is going to cost them one gas and one water. Now, they don't have any water, but they do have a battery, so they will use that as a wild. And now we can see that they can add this into their hand and then add a cube to the board on a blue location. Now, unfortunately for them, they are currently adjacent to yellow, red, red, and purple. None of those are blue, and uh, they've maybe planned this round not as best as they possibly could have, but they have decided to send this cube all the way over here, and we can see that is two spaces away from a previous cube of theirs, which means they have to spend two transportation tokens in order to make this happen. Uh, but that's a pretty good spot over there on the board as well. It touches a lot of different regions, so they're not too upset with this plan. Uh, so they've gone ahead and put the cube down, and now it looks like they're done with their objectives, so the orange player can go. And it appears they want to complete this objective. That's going to cost them a food and a tool. So they can get rid of this tool right here and then this uh, battery as a food. So it looks like everybody has made use of the one battery that everybody starts with. Now we can see right here that this will allow them to put a cube down on the map onto a yellow location. And of course, they can add this volunteer to their hand. It looks like they have a couple good options. They could go right over here, which is adjacent to where they started, uh, but they also have, as an emergency plan, the task of connecting the bees, so they could spend one transportation token to put this over here, but they've decided to hold on to those tokens for now. They're just going to put the cube right over here, and it looks like that's going to be the only objective that they complete this turn. Now that everybody has finished their objective phase, we can move to the fourth phase, which is scouting. Now when we scout, we have the option of scouting one tile from one district out on the board. Now this happens in turn order, and there's no penalty for trying to scout, so when we look out here, we can only grab one of these face down stacks that is touching one of our cubes. That means we could grab this stack, this stack, that one, or this one here. And I figure we'll take this stack, and we will now search through it as a scout action, and we can see them as the different options we have. Now we can see all of them have uh, two rows, one with a smaller number and one with a bigger number. And the uh, left hand symbol is the number of scouting symbols you have to uh, successfully do in order to get the reward on the right hand side. Now you may be wondering how we get these symbols. And if we look back to the cards in our hand, you can see that every one of these cards has a single scout symbol. In fact, the leader who we decided not to heal from the hospital has two scout symbols. And if you remember, the orange player picked up a GPS token with three scout symbols on it. So this is where these start to come into play. Now, when you try to do a scouting action, well, first of all, we don't have to do any of these. If we don't like the look of this, we can put this uh, back onto the board and that would finish out our action. But I think we probably do want to do one of these. Now, we have uh, four and 12, six and 12, and six and 12. Now, we could get to six because if we look at our hand of cards, we have one, two, three, four, five, six of those icons. But there is a risk. After we uh, commit a certain number of cards to a scouting action, we then shuffle them up 
and then one of them will go to the hospital. They become injured with the scouting activity, and it could, for instance, be our scout right here, which we wouldn't necessarily like. So we, um, no matter what, if we do a scouting action, we will lose somebody to the hospital. Uh, but the big difference between four and six is that in our hand, we have two of these double actions. And it would be really terrible if either one of these went to the hospital because I'd really like to play them next turn, uh, probably both of them, to get a bunch of resources so that we can start uh, completing more objectives. So with that in mind, if we didn't use these two, then we would have four of these symbols left over. And with that in mind, I think that is why we should go ahead and do this for activation. Now it is worth noting that instead of actually doing any one of these tiles, you could do a probe search, in which case you reveal the stack to your opponents, you show that you're taking the one with the smallest number, and then you just have to do a search of three. And if you do that, then you don't get any rewards. You simply flip this over and put it into your area. And for the rest of the game, you get plus one search for every future search. So we have a few different options available to ourselves, but I do think what we want to do is this four one. And the main reason for that is because if we look back at our emergency plan, we can see one of the objectives says that we have to have one victory point uh, scouting completed and one medical scouting completed. Well, this would be our victory point scout, so that would be half of the objective towards completing that, which is definitely nice, and it will get us one victory point, which is good as well. So with that in mind, we can now commit this team right here. So that's four of the tokens. So they've now successfully done this. We can put this in our area, and we can generate one victory point for doing it, which will bring us up to three. But then, as I mentioned, we have to take this team of committed cards that went over here and scouted. We have to shuffle them up, and one of them goes to the hospital, and it's going to be this one right here, the blue, the single blue volunteer. Uh, so that wasn't too bad. We can put them right over here in the hospital, and this is, I believe, the only way that cards enter the hospital. And as I mentioned before, at the end of the game, you don't get points for cards in the hospital. So that is a problem, and I believe the doctor is the only way they come out. So these three cards can now rejoin our hand of cards. We can continue using them. And we have effectively completed one scout phase. Uh, and the only real cost, it looks like, was just sending one of the weaker cards to the hospital. The last thing we have to do is, of course, put the rest of the tiles back. And when we do this, we put them face up on the board. So that means that uh, our opponents can actually see what these options are and potentially do um, those if they uh, match up with maybe their objectives or just the things that they want. So we've now finished our scouting, and now green can go. And they've decided to look at these tiles right here. But they've decided not to actually scout any of them, so they'll put them back onto the board. And now the orange player can go, and they're going to look at these tiles right here because they are adjacent with that cube. And it appears they do want to go scouting, and in this case, they want to do this one, which requires six scout icons to generate two books. Now they are going to look at their hand of cards right now. And they've decided to commit these three right here, as well as this GPS token, which is a one-time use. So that is three plus three, or six. That means they have successfully completed this. They can now take two of their cubes and put them down here into the book area. And this can now go face up into their area. It's also worth noting that at the end of the game, we are going to score our, uh, our uh, scouting tiles. And for every different type of scouting tile, and by type it means victory points or getting books or getting medicine, etc., you can look to this graph right here, and if you had, say, five different types, you would generate seven points at the end of the game. So uh, scouting tiles are definitely good. They, of course, have their downside, so the orange player now needs to shuffle these up, and it looks like this yellow volunteer is going to go to the hospital. Okay, we've now finished scouting, so we can move to the fifth phase, which involves gathering new objectives. Now, if you remember, we have our objectives stored right down here, and you can only have three of them at any point in time. So we have the ability of gathering two more objectives potentially this round. And so with that in mind, let's now see what the options are. Over here on the right-hand side of the board, we are always going to have these three rows of cards, and they have a maximum of three cards in them. Now, the price to gather a card depends on how many cards are in that row. If there are currently three cards, which there are for all three of these, then it costs four money to grab a card. If there were, for instance, only two cards in a row, then it costs three. And if there's just one card in a row, it costs only two money. So with uh, fewer cards in the given row, it gets cheaper. And right now we have four money available to ourselves to gather one of these. Now we could just pass and uh, then try to buy one of these uh, later on in this given round after our opponents have potentially bought some because they will make it cheaper for us. And I think that's probably what we should do. 
we have only four money, but we know that the green player has 10 and the orange player has six. So we know they are probably going to be buying some of these. And at this point, we don't really care uh, between one card or the other because currently we have no resources to try and target with the objectives. So I think we are going to pass for now, but we can, of course, jump back in. And we will, in fact, keep going around the table until three people pass in a row. So since we have passed, that means the green player can now uh, optionally grab one of these cards. It looks like they have decided to spend four money, and with it, they're going to pick up this objective here. Now, uh, down below, we can see that in order to complete this, they have to spend four money and then have a purple and two red within the same column of their discard piles. And they can now add this into their objective row. And we can now move on to the orange player, and they have decided to buy this card right here. That will also cost them four money because there were three cards in that row. Uh, this will cost them two books as well as one food. We can see the orange player already has two books, so they are well situated to try and complete this objective. This means it's now back to us, and I think we probably want to buy this politician right here. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper now. There's only two cards in the row, which means it costs us three money. Uh, we only have four money, so we can spend three of that right now. And the reason I like the look of this politician is because as an action, it says that you just spend one food to put a cube down onto any color location on the board. Of course, you only get to do this one time per action, and it is worth five points at the end of the game. But having cubes out on the board is a major way that you can get points in this game. So I do think this is something we should chase. Now, of course, it is a little bit expensive. It costs two water and two tools, but hopefully we can make those happen, maybe even on the next turn. So we can now add this into our objective area. This now slides over and it will only cost two and we go back to the green player to potentially buy another objective. But even though the green player has six money, they have decided they're going to pass, which means the orange player can now pick. And they have decided that they want to grab this one right here for only two money because it is the last one here. Uh, remember, it's four if there are three, three if there are two, and two if there's just one. So they can spend these two money, which is the last of the money that the orange player has, and they can now put this into their objective area. At this point, we now have a fully empty row, and whenever that happens, you have to immediately draw back to three in that row. So we can reveal this card right here. It looks like that costs a book and a medical supply. And once you complete this one for the rest of the game, it says that every one of your GPS tokens are plus one. So they're essentially fours instead of threes, which is pretty powerful. Uh, the next card we have here is another politician. Uh, it's just like the one that we grabbed uh, earlier this round. It's one food to put a cube down on the board. And then the last one is going to be a double blue volunteer. Since the orange player just went, that means that we can now try to pick, but we only have one money, and you always need at least two to grab another objective, so we will pass. And now it goes to the green player, and they've decided to spend four, so they'll get rid of this five, get one back, and they're going to pick up this politician. They really like the idea of this effect, so they can add this into their area, and at this point we can slide these over, and it would normally go over to the orange player, but if we look over into their tableau, we can see they already have three objectives, which means they can't take any more, so they are forced to pass. And in fact, the same thing is happening over here for the green player. At this point, all three players have consecutively passed, so that means we are now going to finish out this phase and move to the sixth phase of the round, which involves cleanup. Now, this one is pretty simple. Uh, all of our food and water is going to spoil, but it's not as bad as it sounds because every food that you lose and you're forced to lose it will get you two money and every water you lose will get you one money or you could get rid of two water to grab a GPS token. So we need to look over here and we have to forcibly get rid of all the food and water, but nobody has any left over, so uh, we can move on. And the next part of cleanup involves everybody optionally being able to discard one unfinished objective, but I don't think anybody wants to do that at this point. So the last thing we do is we discard the rightmost card from each row in the display. So when we come back over here, we can see that this card will go away, as with this one, and this one. And we don't refill any of these rows until that row gets completely uh, exhausted, but we can see that next round there will be some cheap objectives for us to grab, and it's likely that we will start refilling. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this deck right here is the game clock. Once we go through this whole deck, we will finish that round and then play one more round. So the quicker we buy these cards, the quicker we will actually end out the game. Okay, we can now move on to the seventh phase, which involves securing districts out on the board. Now, in order to evaluate this phase, we simply look out to the map and we check to see if any new district is completely surrounded by cubes of a single player's color. 
Now, it hasn't happened just yet, but it is worth noting that players can double up on spots, and there is no penalty for being where another player is. Uh, but when we look out here, we can see that no district is fully surrounded, so we can skip past this step and go right to the eighth and final phase of the round. Now, this says we are going to refresh our hands and then carry out checkmark actions. Now, we only refresh our hands if we have zero to four cards left in our hand. But at the moment, it looks like we have five cards in our hand, so we are not allowed to refresh. And you only get to do the checkmark actions if you do refresh. Now, when that happens, you get to evaluate all of the checkmarks that you have. But of course, at this point, nobody has any because nobody has secured any districts or completed any of these objectives that give them checkmarks. Now we can move on to the green player. And we can see that they have five cards in their hand as well, so they do not refresh. But lastly, we have the orange player, and they have only four cards in their hand. That means they are forced to refresh, and as I mentioned before, that means you look down here, and you find the column with the most cards in it, and that will be the column that you take back, so they can add all of these back into their hand, and now they have to, uh, or they have the ability to activate any checkmark abilities that they have, but they don't currently have any, unfortunately for them. All right, we have now officially finished the first full round of the game. This means we will pass this pawn clockwise to the next player, and we will start right back over with the first phase. Now, just like before, that will be rolling the resource dice, and then everybody will simultaneously plan their cards. First off, we have the dice to roll, and it looks like uh, we have two gas cans here and a food, so we can re-roll the gas cans, and then we have a water and a medipack. All right, let's go ahead and start planning our cards out. And as I mentioned before, I really feel like we should probably use these cards right here. Uh, they're really potent effects with those double uh, icons on them. And right now, the blue die is medicine, and the red die is food. And if we look over here, we have an objective that is for uh, food and medicine. Uh, so that means by playing both of these, we can complete this and have a food and a medicine left over. I suppose the food will unfortunately uh, go away at the end of the round, but it will turn into money, and money is certainly good for doing things like completing this down here, which could get us another one of these uh, actions that we can play during our turn. So with that in mind, I figure we should probably do both of these, and we, all, uh, we currently only have one money, so I figure for the purple, uh, let's play this one, and the reason I want to play a purple is because we, by putting it right over here, we now have two purples and a yellow, so we are very close to meeting this requirement right here, and hopefully on the next turn, we can add one more yellow onto this spot and also have 10 money at the same time. Maybe we can make that happen in order to pull this off and then get a fourth action a turn, because obviously doing more actions earlier in the game is going to be better for us. So let's go ahead and flip this one over right here, and we also have to decide how we are going to plan these ones out. Uh, I don't see a particular reason. I guess this uh, token right up here, I haven't explained it just yet, but if we complete this by using uh, spending four resources of the same type and then having two blue cards and two red cards, then we take this 0 to 6, and we replace the 0 to 4, so that means we are able to pull our cards back more often, and more importantly, activate our check marks more often. So we can add this back over here, and it's worth noting, this is 10 points, and that is 10 points, but I don't think we particularly care. Uh, let's go ahead and do this, because that way we get some red and some blue, we kind of mix things up. So we'll flip these over, and now our opponents will finish their plans. And now we can go into the second phase where we deploy our volunteers and specialists, and the green player can go first. And it looks like the things that they have decided to do are, well, right here, they are going to take two resources of the blue type. And then after that, they will evaluate both of these. But first of all, they'll gather these resources, which will both be medicine. And then they can activate their doctor and use one of those medicines in order to heal somebody from the hospital and then score points for that card they heal. At the moment, they have their double blue volunteer as well as their leader specialist, and they've decided they're going to go with the double blue for now. So that means they will score two points and then add this into their hand. So these will be the first two points of the game for them. And then the last thing they do is activate their scout. We can see that they can spend a book or a fuel to get a GPS token and then gather two money. Well, they don't have a book or fuel, so they're going to skip the top part and just take the two money right over here. And now the orange player can deploy. It looks like these are the three that they've picked. They're going to put two cubes down into the yellow spot, and then one cube in the red, and one cube in the blue. So a very straightforward activation for them. So that's going to turn into two water. It looks like one food, and then one medicine. Lastly, we have our own activation right here, 
And at this point, I do think it's worth noting that as any time actions go, I've already talked about the transportation tokens, but you can also spend five money to get batteries. So money is definitely a good thing to gather. Uh, either way, we can look down here and see that we are going to get two red resources. We will get two blue ones, and then we will also have our mechanic, but let's go ahead and evaluate these first. So this actually means we get two food, and then we gather two medicine. And then we can evaluate the mechanic. It will get us three money, and then if we could discard one tool, we would get three more money. But unfortunately, we don't have any tools, so we will simply gather three money for activating this card. We can now add these back into our area, so we have four money total. And now we can move into the objective space. So the green player is going to start this off, and it looks like they are able to they were able to get this one uh, to happen. They have two red and a purple within this given column. They've got the purple there and the two reds. They also have to spend for money, and it looks like they have exactly four money at this moment. So this means they can go ahead and complete this objective. That will put this into their hand and also allow them to put a cube down onto the map onto a yellow location. And it appears the one they want to go to is right over here, which is adjacent to this green cube there. Green is now done with their objectives, so we can move on to the orange player. And it looks like they're going to start off with this mechanic. Now that's going to cost them two books, as well as one food. So these will all go away, and now we can see that they can add one cube to the map on a purple location. Considering they're trying to connect the two bees up, this purple spot right here seems just fine to them. Next up, it looks like they have been able to complete two objectives this round. Uh, this will cost them one water and then one medicine, which they can take right from there. And this will get added into their hand, and they can now put a cube onto a red spot on the board. It looks like they have a couple options available to themselves, but they decided to go right up here, because uh, in the future, if they get one purple right here, they will actually complete both of these zones. They're uh, pretty obviously trying to gun towards that. Orange is now done with their objectives, so now it comes over to us. And we do have the ability of completing this card right here. It costs one food and one medicine, and it would let us put a cube down onto a blue spot. But I don't think we should do that. The reason for this is because right now it looks like we have four money available to ourselves, and we know that we've been trying to build out this column right here to match up with this objective. Now, currently, we have two purple and one yellow, so we are just one yellow away from making that happen, and we will be pulling up this column this turn so we can place that yellow right there. The problem is that we will require 10 money when we do that, and if we look at the other cards we have available to ourselves, we have this scout, which makes two money, and that's pretty much it. So right now we have four money plus this two, which means we are at six, so we need four more money by next turn's objective phase in order to pull this off, score 10 points, and then play four cards every turn for the rest of the game. And the only way to make that happen is by not spending any of our food. During the cleanup phase, each food turns into two money, and we have two food currently, so I think we should just not complete any objectives so that we will turn that two food into four money, and we will have exactly enough to pull this off and start playing four actions. So we will pass on the objectives for now, which means it's now time to scout. Green gets to start off, but uh, they're not interested in scouting this round, and they don't even really feel like peeking. Maybe they found something they like underneath here uh, that they're going to work towards later. Uh, so they just pass, and now the orange player can go, and they are actually not interested in peeking either. Uh, so now it comes to us, and we only have two cards in our hand, so obviously we cannot successfully complete a scouting action. But according to our emergency plan, we do know that we want to try and complete a medical scout action uh, at some point soon, hopefully, to complete this objective. Now, at the moment, we can look to the board and see that there aren't any medical scout spots, so I figure we should take a peek and try to find it so that on the turn where we can scout, we can go right to the spot we need. So let's take a look at this one right here, and this one has a victory point one. It's got a money scout spot and a books. So no medication uh, scouting tiles over in this area. That was a pretty quick scout phase. We can now move on to the fifth round of the game where people are able to purchase new objectives. The green player gets to go first, but they currently have zero money, so they pass. Then it goes to the orange player who also has zero money, so they pass, which means it now comes back to us. We have four money right now, and there are some pretty cheap stuff out here. Uh, this is two, that's two, and either of these are three but we know we are working towards a plan to have exactly 10 money next round, so I think that we should pass on picking up objectives this round as well. Uh, so that's a pretty quick objective round right there. Nobody takes any of the cards. 
This means we can now clean up and all of our food and water will waste away, but we do get two money per food and one money per water or one GPS token for two water discarded. Looking out to the map, we can see that we have two food and this was kind of by design for us. So both of these will go away and they will turn into two money each, so four money total. We can add this into our area and now we can see that there is one water. So this will waste away for the orange player and it will turn into one money for them. Next up, each player can discard one unfinished objective, but I think everybody's going to pass on that. And finally, over here, we can discard the rightmost card from each of the rows in the objective display. So all three of these will go away, and just like that, we've cleared out two rows. So we can go to our draw deck and fill this out. Looking out at these cards, there is one new one we haven't seen before. This is a mechanic, but it's a different type. It will generate five money immediately after playing it, and then you reveal your hand and you get one money for every search token in your hand. So by playing this card, you can get a ton of money. That's probably why it costs five resources overall in order to actually complete it. Next up, we can move to the secure districts phase, and we can once again see that we don't have any secure districts just yet. Uh, as I mentioned before, the orange player is one purple spot away from completing two districts. Uh, we aren't very close at all at this point. We've only put uh, one extra cube down, uh, so we have a long way to go before we complete any. And the green player looks like they could put two down to complete that district over there. So it might start happening within the next couple turns. Let's now move on to the eighth and final phase of the round, where we check to see if we have zero to four cards in our hand. And if we do, we draw our biggest column. It looks like the green player does have four cards in their hand, so they will grab their biggest column, which is going to be these four cards, and they will add that right over there, and whenever you refresh your hand like this, you get to activate all of your checkmark actions, but again, nobody has actually uh, made any of those yet. Uh, they are hidden down below here when we actually complete our district areas, and we can also get them for completing this type of objective, but so far, it doesn't look like anybody's been going after those. Next up, we can see that the orange player has six cards in their hand, so they do not refresh. And then we have two cards, so we have to refresh and pull all of these back in. And then, again, we would try to evaluate all of our check marks, but we currently don't have any. At this point, we have now finished out the second round of the game, so we can move the pawn over here to the orange player and start off the third round by rolling our resource dice and then planning our cards. So let's see what the dice have in store for us this round. Uh, it looks like we have no duplicates, so there is going to be medicine, gas, and then tools. All right, we can now all simultaneously plan out our turn. Now, the number one thing we know we need to do is to put a single yellow card into this column right here. That way we will have two yellow and two purple in order to match up with this column. So we definitely want to add that right over here. And right now, the yellow resource is gas. So if we do that, then this is going to work out really well for us using the scout. Now, we already knew that we needed to use this scout in order to get up to the 10 money that is required for this objective, and the scout lets us spend a gas in order to grab a GPS token, and that will let us do some more scouting, which can obviously get us some extra resources. So I figure let's go ahead and definitely play this one so that we can finish out this plan. And the last thing that we can play, I think, should be this double red. Now, the reason for that has to do with us trying to complete this objective down here. Now we can see that it is going to require one food and one medicine, and we already have two medicine but no food. So I figure we can use this in order to move the red die over there by spending one of our transportation tokens, and that will get us the food that we need for that objective, and then we will have one extra food which will turn into two more money, which is good considering if we didn't do that, we would have zero money going forward. So we have to put these cards down into our columns, and the only real consideration, I think, is how soon we want to see this card again. So I figure, let's go ahead and put this double red right here, and we'll put the purple one right over there. This is a nice effect, but getting lots of resources is really important for completing objectives as well. So by doing this, we will uh, be gathering this uh, column before that one, and we will see this card again to use it soon. So we, of course, have to play all of these cards face down. And now that everybody has done the rest of their planning, we can start deploying with the orange player. Now it appears that they are going to activate their mechanic, as well as this single resource red volunteer, and this uh, double resource red volunteer here. And they're going to start by putting the double resource one down over here in the tools area. And then for the single red resource, they have decided to spend one of their transportation tokens to drive that volunteer over here. And that will put this resource down into the gas can area. 
Next up, we can see that their mechanic will get them four money. And then if they get rid of one tool, just like that, they will get an additional four money. So that is eight money total, which they can then add into their area. We are now next to deploy. So we can flip over these cards and of course, activate them in any order we like. And let's go ahead and start off by getting the one yellow resource and then the two red resources. Although this volunteer, we did decide to drive to a different area. If you remember from before, we do need food in order to complete one of our volunteer objectives. So we will spend one of our transportation tokens to drive that volunteer from the tools area up here to the food area where we will get two. And then we can simply grab one of these yellow gasoline resources. And now we can activate our scout. Now we can do these in either order as well. Uh, obviously this will get us two money. We can add that right into our bank right now. And then the other option lets us spend a gas or a book in order to gather one GPS token. So I figure we should definitely do that. So we will get rid of this gas right here, and then that GPS token can enter our area. The last player to deploy will be the green player over here. We can see that they are going to put two resources in the yellow area. They also have a double resource blue volunteer, and then their doctor is also going to come into effect. So the yellow volunteer will gather two gasoline resources, but then the blue volunteer would normally um, gather medic packs, but instead they're going to spend two out of their three uh, transportation tokens to move twice around the wheel over here to the water area. So they will gather two water, and both of these tokens are gone. Uh, the green player currently has one more of these, but if you remember, as a free action at any point, you can just lose one victory point to gain one of these transportation tokens. So you always have that as an option, you just have to decide if it's worth the points that you lose for it. The last card they have to deploy is the Doctor, and we can see this will have them spending one medicine, which they do have, in order to heal one person from their hospital area, and then generate victory points equal to that card's value. At the moment, they just have one card in their hospital, and it is their leader, so that will generate three victory points for them right now, and then they can add this into their hand. It looks like they were at two points, so now they go up to five. Now that everybody has deployed, we can move into the third phase where we can start completing objectives. The orange player will start this off, and it looks like the first one they want to do is this middle one on their emergency plan. If we look a little bit closer at the card, we can see it shows a purple, two yellow, and a red, and that is what they have going on here. There's two yellow cards, a purple one, and a red one. So what they do is they will take one of their cubes, and they will cover up the reward on the card, and then they can gain the reward, which is five money. Now at this point, they could choose to get rid of this emergency plan entirely, and place one cube onto any color spot on the board, or they can keep this around for the future to try and complete one or two more of those objectives in order to get more money that they do want. So for now, they're going to hold off on getting rid of this, and they will keep it around. And now they've decided to complete this objective over here. When we look to the bottom of the card, we can see that this will cost them one gas, which they do have, and this will cost them two tools. Now at the moment, they only have one tool, so they need to get one more, and the way that you can do that is by at any point and as many times as you like, you can spend five money in order to make a battery. Now again, batteries are wild resources, so the orange player has decided that this is worth it to them. They'll spend this five money, uh, they'll make this battery, and then turn it into a tool. So with that, they have now completed the uh, requirements for this objective. We can see that they can add this double resource blue volunteer into their hand, and they can now put a cube onto a blue spot on the board. After considering their options on the map, the orange player decides they're going to put their cube right over here into that blue zone. It is adjacent to one of their cubes already. It's now time for us to complete our objectives, and I think let's do the exciting one first. We've been able to put together exactly 10 money, so we can spend this right here, and then we can also see that we have two purple and two yellow within the same column. Uh, they don't have to be necessarily in that order. So with that, we have now completed this objective here. That will generate us 10 victory points, and we are going to play four cards every round for the rest of the game, and hopefully that can kind of uh, equalize things out on the map, because right now the orange player has put uh, four cubes down, and we only put one, although we are going to put one more out. But either way, uh, we've definitely been uh, seeding our map control to try and get this going, and I hope it's going to be worth it to us. Uh, but before we move on, let's go ahead and grab those 10 points, which will jump us all the way up to 13. Next up, I think we should complete this objective right here to gather a two resources blue volunteer. We can see that this will cost us one food as well as one uh, medication, and this is actually one of our starting cards that we never actually got around to doing. 
Fortunately, we have planned well, and we do indeed have a medicine, and we have a food, so we can get rid of both of these. We can now add this card into our hand, and we can now put a cube down onto a blue location on the map. At the moment, there is just one blue location that is adjacent to us, and this is the D location, which is uh, the thing we're trying to do. We're trying to connect D up to this other D right here in order to gather five money from our emergency plant. So I figure that's a pretty good placement for us. It looks like all three of the players are now on this location right here, and we can now move on. This means it's time for Green to complete their objectives, and the first one they're going to show is going to be their emergency plan A, the middle section here. This requires a blue, a purple, and two yellow, and that is what they've been able to collect over here in this column. So that means they can cover this up right here and gather five money. They can now add this into their area, and now they have decided to complete this politician objective. It's going to cost them two water and two gas. We can see out here on the board that they were indeed able to collect that uh, two gas and two water. And now they get to add this politician to their hand. It is worth five victory points at the end of the game, which is pretty good. And they can now add a cube onto a purple location on the map. After considering their options, they're going to add it right over here. Okay, we can now move on to the fourth phase, which is scouting. Uh, the orange player gets to do this first, but they have just decided to pass. Now, if you remember, we are trying to find a scouting tile that has a medicine reward, because if we have that, then next round we can get five extra money because we already found a victory point uh, tile right here. So completing this is nice because money is a good thing to have, uh, but so far we haven't been able to find a stack that has uh, medicine. Now, I figure let's go ahead and try this one next, and when we flip it over, we can see that it does, actually it says two. Uh, so we can see this one would give us two medicine for five, uh, this one would give us three medicine for eight scouting um, uh, symbols. And when we look at our hand of cards, we currently have one, two, three, four of those symbols. But we also have this GPS symbol or token that we picked up this round. So I think uh, we don't have enough uh, to get to eight, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and get to five. Uh, so this is three right here. And then I figure we will obviously not send this person out because we don't want them to be injured. Uh, so we now have to send two out of these three people. Now, at the moment, we do have a blue person that's already injured in the hospital, and I think it would be not great to lose another blue person to that. So I figure let's just uh, not send them out, and then we can send both of these people out, plus the three from the GPS token. Uh, obviously, we have to randomize these up, and one person goes to the hospital, but they are the same. So it looks like this red volunteer will go over there now. And we can tuck them right over here with the other people in the hospital. Now, I've mentioned before that uh, cards in the hospital are not worth points at the end of the game. But I am somewhat incentivized, or inclined anyway, to maybe keep these cards in the hospital. Uh, they're pretty low value cards. They only have one victory point on them. And by not having them in our uh, deck, we can kind of cycle through things uh, potentially a little bit faster. But uh, that's something we can consider in the future. I think we'll definitely be pulling our leader out next time we do a doctor action. So it looks like we were able to complete this tile right here. That means we can now get two uh, medicine resources as a reward. We can add those right over here. We have lots of medicine right now, so I definitely think we should be uh, trying to do the doctor again soon, uh, or certainly trying to draft uh, objectives that require medicine. Uh, we can now add this into our area, and we can see that we have two of these tiles now. Uh, they're both different, so they show face up, and uh, that's pretty good for us. At this point, it's time for Green to scout, and they've decided to scout this stack right here. And after looking at it, and in fact, I think they looked at this earlier, uh, they have decided they are going to complete this scouting objective right here. Now we can see that it is 8 or 16, and the reward on the top is 3 gas, and the bottom is 4 gas and 6 victory points. Now the one they are going for will be the 8 in order to get 3 gasoline. And they're going to do it by sending all of the cards in their hand out on that scouting mission. We can see that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, symbols. And they're probably just really hoping that they don't accidentally pull either one of these cards to go into the hospital. Uh, so speaking of which, it's time for them to shuffle their hand up uh, really nicely. And they're again hoping to hit one of those uh, less effective volunteers. And it looks like they did. Uh, it's going to be this single resource blue volunteer here. So they will be sent over to the hospital. And then green will gain three gas, which they can put right over here. Scouting is now done, so we can now shift into the new objectives phase. Orange gets to start, and they're simply going to spend two money in order to pick up this uh, double resource yellow volunteer right here, because it's the only one in that row, so it only costs two. 
After they have spent that, they can now add that into their objectives row, and it's time to refill this row down here. So it looks like we've got a uh, one of these objectives that just gets you one medicine every time you activate your check marks. Uh, that's definitely a nice thing considering many players have uh, potentially activated check marks but have had no check marks to actually activate yet. So I definitely think people are going to be interested in this one. Uh, next up we have a, another one of these white ones. Uh, this one lets you spend two of your clean water during the waste phase in order to get seven money. Uh, so that's definitely a really nice reward. And it looks like the last one is going to be a triple blue resource, uh, blue volunteer that is. It's now time for us to pick, but we currently have zero money, so we definitely pass. Now it's time for the green player to go, and they do have uh, some money, but they're going to pass for now. And when it goes back to the orange player, uh, they have decided they're going to spend, it looks like, four of their money in order to pick up this uh, objective right here. They like the idea of getting uh, free medical uh, pack resources every time they activate their check marks. So this money is now gone. Uh, it comes back to us, but we have no money, uh, so we pass. And then it comes to the green player, and they have decided to spend three of their money in order to pick up this objective right here. So this is now discarded. Uh, it comes back to the orange player who passes. We are going to pass, and it looks like the green player could technically buy this one for two money, but uh, they decide they're probably not going to have that kind of money around for a while. Uh, so they're going to pass as well, and that means we have now finished out this phase. So we can now move on to cleanup, where our food and water will turn into resources. And it looks like we're the only one who's going to have that happen, uh, so this one food will turn into two money for us. Next up, all players can optionally discard one objective if they like, but nobody is looking to do that. So now we will discard the rightmost card from all of these different rows. Once we've done that, we can see that we have an empty row down here, so we can draw the top three cards from the deck. It looks like we have a, another checkmark uh, objective, which just gets you three money when you activate your checkmarks. We've also got a scout. Now this one says that when you activate them, you can spend a gas to get a GPS token, and you can also spend a book to get a GPS token. So that is a very good way to get a lot of scouting power. And then we can see over here, it's another objective uh, with a checkmark. This one lets you spend two money to get a battery every time you activate your checkmarks. We can now move on to the seventh step where we secure our districts. But at this point, we have still yet to see any of the districts get completed. Uh, that's not too abnormal at this point in the game, though. We have a lot of growing out to do. And again, there is one point right up here which would close two districts if the orange player is able to get that purple down. Uh, the green player is getting a little bit closer to potentially closing this off. Uh, we aren't really close at all. I guess we haven't really been focusing on that just yet. So let's now move on to the eighth and final phase. Every player who has four or less cards in their hand must pull cards back from their columns. It looks like orange does have exactly four cards, so they have to take the column with the most cards in it and add that back into their hand. And at this point, they can activate all of their check marks, but they don't currently have any. Uh, they're definitely hoping to get this one played uh, sooner rather than later so that they can get those bonuses when they activate check marks by pulling the cards back into their hands. We are in a similar boat because we have three cards in our hand, so that means we have to refresh, but we once again also don't have any check marks to activate. And lastly, we have the green player with six cards in their hand, so they do not refresh anything. This means we've finished the third round of the game, and we can move into the fourth round. We will be the starting player, and the first thing we have to do is roll the resource dice. So let's see what will be available this round. It looks like we have no duplicates, so that is going to be, oops, that was a food. Uh, we have a gas, and then we have a book. We can now all simultaneously plan out our cards, and for the first time in the game, we get to play four cards out. Now, unfortunately, the die roll did not go in our favor this round. Uh, the main thing we want to do is complete this politician objective, and it requires two water and two tools. We don't have either of those right now, and none of the dice landed on any of those spots. But that's what uh, transportation tokens are for. Uh, it does cost us money, but I do think we have to move forward and keep completing these objectives. So with that in mind, I think we'll definitely use this uh, two blue activation for a uh, volunteer, and that will take care of uh, one of these two sets. I think we should spend one of our three banked up medicine in order to use the doctor in order to heal up our leader. And then I think we should use probably a yellow and a blue. Uh, both of these I think we will turn into one of the resources we need to go ahead and make this doctor happen. Unfortunately, that means we are going to use a lot of transportation tokens this round, but that, that's kind of what they're there for. It's to kind of get us out of a jam if we find ourselves in one. 
So that means we are playing all of these right here, and we can tell that it's uh, pretty obvious we're going to be pulling cards back into our hand. So I think we probably want to focus on getting more resources in the future. So let's go ahead and play this double blue into this column, because we'll pull this back and then just have a monster of a turn next turn, probably. Uh, just playing all of these cards out, hopefully, and getting a ton of resources that uh, hopefully match up a little bit better with what we're trying to do. Uh, then, uh, looking towards the future and potential matches, we can see over here on our emergency plan, we want two purple, a blue, and a yellow in the same spot. Now, I think, we, well, we already have one purple down here, and that requires two purple, so maybe we should just go ahead and play the doctor right here. That means we'll have uh, two out of the four there to get us some more money, and then for these two, I don't think it super matters, we can just place them down like that, and we've set ourselves up an effective turn, uh, a little bit painful, but I think it's the one we have to go with. Now that both of our opponents have also done their planning, we can start because we are the starting player. So we can flip all of these over, and we know that we are going to uh, send the blue volunteer to get two resources. Uh, this other blue volunteer will send to get one, and then this yellow volunteer will also go to get one. Uh, I think let's go ahead and start off with our doctor, though. Uh, we can spend one medicine to heal somebody from our hospital. So we can remove this medicine right here and then heal somebody, and we know that's going to be our leader. That will generate us three victory points right now, because once again, the doctor not only heals them, but we all get a morale boost, I suppose, as that person joins back in. So let's grab those three points, which brings us up to 16. Next up, let's have our double resource blue volunteer head over here, but then spend one of our transportation tokens to have them go to the tool section to get two tools. Next, after that, we have a single blue uh, resource volunteer, and we can drive them over to the water location. And lastly, we have a single yellow resource volunteer, and we will use the last of our uh, starting five transportation tokens to move this over here. So that means in the future, whenever we want to do transportation actions, it will start costing us victory points. It looks like green is next, so we can flip this over and see that they are going to actually activate their leader. Then right here in the middle, we have a single resource blue, uh, red volunteer that is. And then over here, we have the politician being activated. So they're going to start off by having this red volunteer head over here and make one food for them. And then after that, they're going to have their leader go. Now we can see here that this will generate one battery for them. So they can add that right into the middle and they can now activate one of their check marks, but they still don't have any check marks going. So that means the second part of this leader is not going to be beneficial for them. And the last thing they will do is activate their politician. Now this will cost them their one food and it will turn into one cube out on the map of any color. And they have decided they're going to put it right down over here. Now the green is done, the orange player can deploy their cards. It looks like they have a double resource blue volunteer here. They also have a double resource yellow volunteer. And lastly, it looks like they have their mechanic. So they're going to send their yellow volunteer over here and they will make two books. And then their blue volunteer will head over to the gas area. But they have decided to spend one of their transportation tokens to move this right up here and get two tools instead. Next up, their mechanic will activate. This will get them four money, and then they can spend one tool in order to get four more money. So that worked out really well for them, gathering eight money with this card. So they can add that money into their supply. And now we can move on to the third phase of the round, and we can start off by completing objectives. Now, the first thing that we complete is going to be the top line of this emergency plan D. We can see it requires one victory point uh, uh, scouting tile as well as one medical scouting tile. We were able to do that so we can put a cube right over here and we can also take five money immediately. At this point if we wanted to we could just ditch this plan and put one cube down on any spot that we wanted to on the board but I think we should hold on a little longer. We are actually not that far away from either of these other two goals and getting that extra money really could be a helpful thing for us. Next up let's go ahead and complete this politician objective. And we will do that by getting rid of two water, as well as two tools. Now this card will get us five points at the end of the game. Uh, we can also add it into our hand, and as a bonus, we can put one cube down onto a purple location. Now I think we have two good options. We can put it down right over here, which means we are angling to try and complete this zone right here. And we are uh, continuing our presence in this large zone in the middle where uh, if somebody else scores it, we will get more points, or we could also potentially be the person to end up scoring it. 
Now the other decent option for us is we could put this down here, but we would have to spend one transportation token to get over there. Now that would cost us one victory point to do that, but we would now be just one location away from connecting this delocation to that delocation, and that would generate for us five extra money by completing another line on this emergency plan. Now getting money is good because that's the fuel that we need to um, get more cards, uh, more objectives that is, to continue buying them. And even though right now we have seven money, I am a little bit worried about our money situation. So I think we should probably prioritize that a little bit more than just one victory point. So we can head over here. We of course have to buy one transportation token to do that, which means we lose one point, bringing us down to 15. Next up, we have the green player, but unfortunately for them, they are just a little bit away from being able to complete any of their objectives. So that means for this round, they won't be completing any. And I'm a little bit worried about the green player. I don't think they're playing too well in this game so far, but we'll see if they're able to turn some things around. So let's now head over here to the orange player, and they are going to have a pretty good turn here. Uh, the first thing they will do is complete this objective. We can see that they have two red and a yellow card. They also have to spend four money. Uh, it looks like they have 11 money right now, so they'll get rid of this five and take one back. They can now add this card into their hand, and they can add a cube down onto a yellow location on the map. And it appears the one they've decided is right over here. So they are just one location away from completing this zone, as well as another location for both of these. So Orange is doing a very good job of uh, encircling some of these regions. Next up, the Orange player can now complete one of the steps on this Secure the Pharmacy objective. We can see over here that they have two books, and they have one tool. That means they can now cover up this spot right here and get themselves one victory point. And after they do that, they have decided they want to cash this in. Uh, they could, of course, hold on to it to complete this top line here. And if they did do that, they would complete all of the rows. And once all rows are completed, that is how you get this bonus down here. So by cashing this in early, they are uh, neglecting or, I guess, uh, saying no to these uh, potential five bonus victory points. But it does mean they get to add a cube to the board right now, and they feel like that's important. Uh, but before I get too far ahead of myself, uh, the orange player does get to take one point for this, which is actually their first point of the game. Now they are going to cash this one in, as I said, so that means we can see down here uh, that it is going to go into the checkmark area. Now the rules say that the checkmark area is just anywhere to the left of your board, but for the sake of um, uh, cleanliness on the table when I am filming, I'm going to go ahead and tuck these in along the top so it's very obvious. So they now have one checkmark ability, uh, so every time they reset their hand, they will get to activate this and gather one medical pack. But there's one more thing to do, and that is that we cannot forget to put the cube down on the board onto any spot of their choice. And not too unsurprisingly, they've decided to go right onto that purple location right there. So by doing that, they have now completely encircled this area with cubes of their color, as well as this area with cubes of their color. So that is two secure districts this round, but we won't actually evaluate these until we get to the seventh phase of the round. Speaking of phases, let's now move into the fourth, and that one will be scouting. We are the starting player, so we can scout first, and I think that we probably want to. Now, the biggest reason for this is that we have five cards in our hand, and if we scout, that means one person will go to the hospital, which will bring us down to four, and that means that we will be forced to reset our hand, and right now, the column that we would pull back has three volunteers that all get two resources. So I would really like to do that this turn, so I guess in a kind of a weird way, we want to hospitalize somebody. Now, I think uh, we could just go with some of the face-up options that we see, and in particular, I think this is probably a really good one. Uh, this costs us uh, five scouting points, and it will get us two tools, and we can do this because we are adjacent to this zone with one of our cubes, and I also like this because it means that we don't have to use our politician as part of this. Now, I'd really like to play the politician next turn to get more cubes out on the board, and if we look at our hand now, we have two of the uh, search tokens on our leader, and then one, two, three here. So that gets us up to the five that we need for this. So we have successfully scouted this out. That will get us two tools right away, which we can put right over here. And then of course we do have to hospitalize somebody. Now I think the one we don't want to hospitalize the most is probably this mechanic. Uh, we now have tools that the mechanic could use to get us more money and money is certainly good, but uh, it's a one in four chance that we lose the person that we really don't want to. And a 50-50 chance we lose somebody we don't care about and it's gonna be good. Okay, cool. Uh, this is one of the single resource uh, volunteers. Uh, we're not too bothered by this person going to the uh, hospital. They are less effective than some of the other people in our hand. 
So we can put them right over here, and then we can pull this search token over into our area. Now, once again, at the end of the game, we will get points for the uh, variety of different search tokens that we have accomplished throughout the game, and that is the same as the graph for the different scoring regions. Right now, we can look over to that graph and just take my word for it that having three different types is worth three points at the end of the game, and if we get a fourth type, that, then that will be five points, so a plus two victory point uh, jump. Now, that's not a ton, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, it's also worth keeping in mind that if we take another one of these tokens that uh, matches the type we've already taken, then we flip it over, and this is a permanent search token for the future. So going wide is certainly nice for getting victory points, but uh, going deep with any of these makes, it better at, makes us better at scouting, and that's something to consider on future rounds, I think. Now that we are done scouting, the green player can go, but they have decided to pass on it. And now the orange player can go, and they have decided to take a look at this stack right here. And then they're going to put it back face down. They don't like the idea of uh, uh, any of those options there. So they're going to pass on their scouting, which means we can move to the fifth phase where we can now get new objectives. And we are certainly interested in this, considering we have none in our bank right here, of course, besides our emergency plan. When we come out here to look at our options, I think one of these really jumps out at me, and that is this black market. Now, having a check mark ability that lets us spend two money to turn into one battery does seem nice for chaining into other things, uh, but also we already have to the, the two tools that we need to get the bottom done. This does require one food, but we are pretty motivated to try and get food anyway because we want to play a politician as well, uh, in future rounds anyway. Also, this lets us put a wild uh, uh, cube down on the map, so it's very flexible there. So I think this is probably worth it. We can spend this four money right here and grab this card. Next up, we have the green player, but they currently just have two money, so they are going to pass, uh, feeling somewhat confident that there will be something that only costs two money by the time it's their next turn. So now the orange player is going to go, and they have decided to spend, it looks like, three money. And with this, they are going to pick up this uh, Get the Bank Afloat card. Uh, they are pretty close to actually uh, uh, completing this already, and they like the idea of getting uh, money every time they do check marks. So they can add this into their area which means it's now time for us to take our turn, and it looks like we currently have three money left over. Now, we could buy this for two, but right now we don't have any books or gas, and that is a lot of books and gas that we would require uh, to actually buy this one or to actually get it completed. Uh, but what we do have is a couple of medicine, and this mechanic here costs two books and three medicine. So we are already well on our way to completing that one, and this card uh, gets five money plus one money per scouting uh, symbol in all the cards in your hand. So this is a really good way to get a lot of money. So I think let's go ahead and spend three money to pick this one up and add it into our area which means that green can now go, and they're very happy with the way this worked out. They're going to spend two, and they're going to pick up the scout right here. Uh, they already have three gas sitting right over there, so they just need two books in order to complete this objective. So this money is spent, and now we can go back to the draw deck and fill three more in here. So it looks like we found a double resource red volunteer. We found another double resource red volunteer, and then we have found another one of these mechanics. Uh, this one is a very powerful mechanic. He makes five money plus another potential five, uh, but is pretty expensive to actually get played. It needs four resources of one type, and then, of course, having two blue and a red within a column. It's now time for orange to go again, and they are also pretty happy with how this played out. They're going to spend two money in order to pick up this objective. Uh, if we look to the bottom, it looks like both of these have the two blue and one yellow objective down here, and they both just cost money. So uh, I think the orange player is going to try to stockpile a decent amount of money and potentially try to get both of these done next turn. Now, we'll see if they're able to pull that off. Either way, that is a pretty good uh, set of grabs for the orange player. Next up, we of course have to refill this row in once again. It looks like right here we have Organize a Food Convoy. This one just makes one food every single time you do a check mark, which is very attractive to the players that are trying to spend food to activate those politicians, uh, most notably us and the green player. Uh, next up, we have a two resource yellow volunteer, and then we have Accessing the Library. This makes every one of your GPS tokens that you spend worth one more scouting token. Now, before I get rid of this, I suppose it's worth noting that this is the game clock, and we have already gone a pretty significant way through it in these four rounds so far. It's now time for us to grab objectives again, and even though we do have a slot for one, we don't have any money, so we have to pass, and the green player also has to pass. They are out of money and out of slots, and finally we have the orange player. They do have two money, but that's not enough to buy anything, so they will pass as well. Now that we are done gathering new objectives, we can move into the sixth phase. We can now clean up, and everybody's going to lose their food and water, but nobody actually has any right now. 
So now everybody can optionally discard one objective if they want, but nobody wants to do that yet. And the last thing we do is discard the rightmost card from the display of objectives. That means we will get rid of all three of these, but right now we don't have any clear rows, so we don't seed any more cards in. Let's now move on to the seventh phase where we secure districts, and for the first time in the game, this is going to happen. As we've pointed out before, both of these districts are completely surrounded by cubes of a single color, so in order to secure a district, that player has to grab one of these outpost tokens and put it onto the board. Now they can grab any that they like, and once they free that up, you can see a little check mark here, and that means they can continue to use it. Now the orange player is going to start off by using this one because we can see that this check mark uses one medicine and turns it into a battery, and they already have a check mark that makes a medicine. So that means every time they activate check marks, they can get a medicine and turn that into a battery, so effectively gain one wild resource every time they activate check marks, which is a really good effect. They can now add this token over into either of these regions. They're going to go with this one first. Whenever a region is secured, you actually remove all of the scouting tiles from that region from the game, and now it will score. Now, each player will count up the number of cubes that they have that are adjacent to that region, and then they consult this graph over here to see how many points they get. Now, orange has four cubes that are adjacent to it, so we can see that they will get five victory points, and every other player would potentially also get points, but right now, nobody else has gotten into any of these spots, so that means nobody else is going to get points for it. So we can give the orange player five points, which brings them up to six, and now we can move on and secure this region right here. Once again, they can grab one of these outposts and put it on the board, and they've decided to do this one here. That will let them, once per checkmark phase, spend one book in order to gather one GPS token. They can now add this right over here, and of course get rid of these scouting tokens, and now we can see that they are once again the only person on any of these nodes. They have three cubes that are adjacent to that district, so when we look over here, they will generate three victory points, which will bring them up to nine. At this point, we don't have any more districts to secure, so we can move into the 8th round where we can refresh our hands and if we do that, we can activate check marks. We can do this first and we know that we only have 4 cards in our hand, so we are under the threshold to refresh. That means we have to grab the column with the most cards and it will be this very effective column right here. Uh, we can now activate our check marks, but we still don't have any. Uh, we will hopefully have one going into the next turn, but for now we don't have any to do. Next up, green only has three cards in their hand, so they will also refresh all of these, and they also don't have any check marks to activate. And lastly, we have the orange player, but they have six cards in their hand, so that is not the four or less that is required to do a refresh. Now, this is part of the reason why it makes sense to try and go after this objective right here. It costs four resources that are the same. You also need to have two blues and two reds in the same column, and it lets you upgrade this zero to four to a zero to six. So if the orange player had already done that, then they would actually refresh right now, so they would always float a bigger hand, and they would also activate their check marks more often, which the orange player is definitely incentivized to do. So uh, perhaps they're going to try to make that happen. Uh, they do currently have two blue, and it looks like... Uh, oh, no, that's purple. So two blue and one red over here. So maybe they'll see if that's something they'll try to weave into their next turn. Okay, we've now finished out that round, so we can pass the first player pawn over to the green player, and this is going to start off the fifth round of the game, and as always, we will begin by rolling the resource dice. So, let's see what we get this round. And right away we have, oh my gosh, three gas cans, so we will have to reroll all three of these dice, and now we have three that are different. That's one medicine, one tool, and then one book over there. It's now time for us to start planning things out, and we do have quite a few powerful cards in our hand this turn. Now our main goal for the round is going to be completing both of these objectives, and we can see that we currently have two medicine and two tools. Now the two tools is going to get us most of the way towards completing this objective. We just need two food, uh, or I'm sorry, one food, and unfortunately no dice are on the food spot. So I think what we can probably do is associate this um, blue one, use this double blue, and we will spend one point to transport that over here and make two food, and that means we use one food for this, and then the other food for this politician, letting us put another cube out on the board. Now that's going to take care of this with just two of our cards, and we have two more cards that we get to play. So looking over uh, here, we can see that we have two of the three medication we need. So I figure let's use this other double blue activation to get two more uh, medicine. Uh, that will leave us with an extra medicine, but that's okay. We'll find ways to use it. And then, of course, we need two books. 
Now there is a die on the books, but unfortunately we don't have any way to uh, utilize it. We have no yellow cards in our hand. So I think we are just going to have a really powerful turn and use this uh, double red and uh, probably actually use this double blue to move this over here, that double blue to get to medicine and the double red to jump over here and get the food that we need. Uh, so obviously we are burning through all of our most powerful cards, but this is going to be a very big turn for us. It's possible the next turn won't be anywhere near as consequential, but I like the look of this one. We of course have to associate these out with different spots now, and we can see that we only have four cards left over at the moment, so we will be pulling cards back up, and that means that this column right here will be the one that will pop back into our hand. Now, uh, that is definitely going to help us influence uh, figuring out what card to put here. Uh, part of me wants to just put the politician down so that we can get it back again, and then hopefully use it next turn to put another cube down on the board and just really blitz out the board really fast. The problem is, if we do that, it looks like we will have a rather weak next turn because we won't have any of the double resource activations. Now, that is probably worth it. I think we should maybe stick with that and just have next turn be somewhat weak for actual resource acquisition. We do get to play four cards down, so using these uh, single cards is not the end of the world. So yeah, let's go ahead and put our politician right over here. And then for the other ones, uh, they're a bit equal. I guess we could put a blue down here, and then we could split this red and this blue over here. Right now, uh, I suppose the only other thing we're really paying attention to is going to be this objective up here, which wants two blue and two red. Although at the moment, it's going to be hard to build that out with how thin our deck is, although we are continuing to get more cards into our deck. Uh, I think that this middle objective right here is probably something we are going to end up ignoring, but we can uh, play that by ear once we get to it. So for now, we have planned everything out. Of course, these are all face down in our area. Now that all players have planned out their cards, we can move into the deployment phase. We'll start over here with the green player. They have a single resource red volunteer. They also have a single resource yellow volunteer. And lastly, a double resource blue volunteer. For the blue volunteer, they're actually going to use a transport token to head over here to the book area. So they collect two of those. This is going to be their last of the transport tokens that they started the game with. After that, they are going to go ahead and send this red volunteer to the red zone to make a tool. And lastly, this yellow volunteer is going to use a transport token that they buy by spending one victory point in order to head down here and gather one water. Now that everybody has planned out their cards, we can move into the second phase where we deploy our volunteers and specialists. We can start over here with the green player. It looks like they will have a red volunteer uh, gather one resource. They will have a, another single re resource red volunteer. And lastly, they have a double resource blue volunteer. It appears they want this double resource blue volunteer to get into their last transport token, and that will drive them over here so that they can collect two books instead of medicine. Uh, the green player doesn't have any more of these, but they can of course buy more by spending points. After that, both of their red single resource volunteers will head over here and make one tool each. Next up, we have the orange player, and the first card they have here is a single resource red volunteer. They also have their mechanic, and they have a double resource yellow volunteer. So the red volunteer will head over here and make a tool, and then the yellow volunteer will go over here and make books. They're okay with uh, those positions. They don't need to transport anybody around. Lastly, it's time for us to deploy. Uh, we have a good idea of what we're going for this turn already. It's going to be a big turn for us. That's going to be a double resource blue volunteer, a double resource red volunteer, another double resource blue, and then a politician. As we discussed before, we have to do some modifications. So this uh, double resource red is going to get into a transportation vehicle and head over here and make food, although we do have to spend a victory point for uh, generating that transportation vehicle. Next up, we have this double blue, which will just get us two medipacks over here. And lastly, this other double blue will get into a transporter and they are gonna head down here to the book area. And that is gonna cost us one more point for that single transport. The last thing we have to deploy is our politician. Now this is going to cost us one food, and we can now put this down as a cube on the board according to the normal rules, but we can see that it can go on any color. Well, we know we're just one city away from being able to complete this part of the objective on our emergency plan to get five more money. So let's go ahead and put this right down here into that yellow spot. So we have now connected both of the D cities, and we can evaluate that soon when we're doing objectives. Speaking of which, we can now move into the objective phase, and the green player is going to start things off. It looks like they're going to start by completing this scout objective. That's going to cost them two of their books, and it will also cost them three gas that they've had sitting around for a little while here. This is going to get added into their hand, and it is worth six points at the end of the game. So I think that's 
uh, the highest value that we've seen so far, and it's going to allow them to put a cube down into a purple spot in the board, and they've decided to go right over here, which means they have now completed a district, and they can score that later on in the round. Next up, they're going to complete the last of the starting objectives. It's still in their area. This is going to cost them one of their tools, and they're going to spend this battery right here to cover the water resource. So that means they can now add this into their hand. It's worth two points at the end of the game, and they can now put a cube down onto a yellow location, and they've decided that they like this spot right over here. Next up, we have the orange player, although I just realized they forgot to actually deploy their mechanic during their uh, turn. Uh, so they're going to do that right now. This costs them one tool, which they did uh, make in this round. That means they are going to gather six money right now. And they can add that into the two that they already have. So they now have eight total. And now they're going to complete objectives. And unfortunately, they don't have enough money to complete both of these. Uh, because right now they have the two blue and the one yellow uh, taken care of in this uh, column. And it looks like they are going to be pulling back that column this turn. So uh, this really synergistic uh, pair of cards that they picked up does not look like it's going to be as good as they thought originally. But they're obviously going to stick with it. Uh, they've decided to go with this objective here. That's going to cost them seven out of their eight money. So this leaves them with just one money left over. And now they can go ahead and get one victory point. They can also put a cube onto a wild color on the board. And as a new checkmark ability, they get to gather three money every time they uh, pull their cards back. So that point will bring them up to 10. And then for the cube, they will put it right down here into this red spot, which means they have completed this district right here. At this point, orange is now done. They just did the one objective. So now we get to go, and this is going to be a pretty good objective turn for us. We can start things off by showing that we have now connected both of the D cities with uh, nodes of our color. So that means we can put this right over here, and that will get us five money right now. And now I think it's time for us to go ahead and cash this emergency plan in. Uh, we could try to set up this double purple, blue, and yellow to get five more money, but I think right now I would rather have the cube on the board, and there is no bonus for completing all of these. So we can go ahead and put a cube down and just flip this over and put it back onto our board. You never get any more of these emergency plans. And we can now put this cube onto a spot of any color, and I figure we should go ahead and put it right over here. The reason for that is because we are now just one purple away from completing this zone here, and we can see that uh, this mechanic will get us a purple. So let's go ahead and complete this one. That requires two books, which we do have, and it requires three medical packs. Now we have four medipacks, so that means we can remove all of these. That means we have completed this objective. It's going to be worth five points at the end of the game. We can now add this really powerful card for getting money into our hand. And then, of course, we can put one cube on the board onto a purple location. And as I mentioned before, I think this is a great spot for us. We have now uh, closed off this district, so there's going to be quite a bit of uh, district securing going on in this round. At this point, we aren't done, though, because we do have this black market, and it will cost two tools and one food, and we happen to have two tools and one food. So we are almost completely cashed out at this point, uh, but this means we now have our first checkmark uh, ability of the game. It says that whenever we evaluate our checkmarks, we can spend two money to get one battery. Now, I'm not sure if we're always going to do that, but it's going to be really nice having that in our back pocket. Oops, I am getting a little bit ahead of myself, though. We do get to gain two victory points when we complete this objective, and we could add one cube down onto the board into a color of our choice. So I figure let's put the cube down into this red spot over here so we have now completed both of these districts in this turn. We can also grab our two points, which brings us to 15. We've now all completed our objectives, so we can move on to the scouting phase. And we're going to start with the green player, and it looks like they want to take this scouting tile right here. It will get them two victory points if they show six scouting tokens, and they will reveal this uh, team right here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six with this scout over here. Uh, so that means they will get the two points for this, but of course one of these people will have to go to the hospital. Uh, they're really hoping that it is not the scout, and it looks like it is going to be uh, just this single resource yellow volunteer here. So they can take those two points, which brings them to seven. Next up, the orange player can scout, but they've decided to pass, and now we can go, and I figure we do have one, two, three, four, five, six scouting power in our hand. Now with that in mind, let's take a look at this stack right here. It's going to go away anyway once we uh, secure this region later on in this round. So the options are six scouting power for two tools. We have nine scouting power in order to get four victory points, and then four power to get one gas. 
Now at the moment, we don't actually have any gas tanks. So if we took this one right here, we would get a gas and this would be our fourth different type of uh, scouting tile, which means we would go from three points to five points at the end of the game. So that's uh, two extra points for taking this one right here. And getting a gas is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I think if we look at our hand, Maybe what we should do is risk things a little bit. Uh, we could use uh, potentially, uh, well, I guess at the moment, we just really don't want to lose this mechanic. So we have one, two, three, four, five uh, power going in. And having this mechanic is probably good as well. So yeah, let's just send our leader along with these two here in order to get to the four for that scouting tile. We have a one in three chance of losing our leader, which would be a bummer. But we could also um, use our doctor to heal them back and get three more points for it. So it's not the end of the world. And if that doesn't happen, then one of these two relatively ineffective volunteers could go into the hospital. Uh, we will lose one point at the end of the game, but our deck will be more streamlined and we'll be able to cycle things faster. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take this right here. Uh, these will go face up into this zone. Uh, we can now grab our single gas can right there, and it's time to shuffle these up and see who unfortunately gets injured in this scouting expedition, and it's going to be... Oh man, it's our leader. All right, we've had good luck so far, so I suppose we had this coming. Uh, so unfortunately, the leader is going to head over to the hospital now, and now we can move on to the new objectives phase. Now this phase will be a little bit streamlined because the green player has no money, so they pass. The orange player only has one money, so they are going to permanently pass, which means it now comes back to us, and we do have five money and zero objectives. So I do think we should spend this five money in order to grab a uh, three-value objective as well as a two-value objective. At the moment, we are pretty weak when it comes to uh, being able to utilize the yellow resource die right here. We don't have any double yellow uh, resource volunteers, so I figure let's buy this one for three, and then uh, let's go ahead and grab this right here. Uh, getting this for two is certainly great, and also whenever we have a checkmark action, it will get us one food, and we could use that food to potentially keep using our politician right here. So that is a really good combo. I like the look of both of these objectives right here. That's going to cost us three and two money, which means we are now out of money entirely. And the last thing I suppose we have to do is deal out three more cards to this area. So right here we have secure a money transport. Uh, this one just generates you three money every time you do a check mark. Uh, this one right here is another mechanic who makes a ton of money. Uh, six plus potentially five money. And then lastly, we have support the hospital. Uh, this one lets you spend uh, many packs in order to get three victory points once every time you do a check mark action. At this point, we can now clean up and everybody will lose their food and water, but at the moment, nobody has any. Uh, now everybody can optionally discard one objective, but nobody's interested in doing that right now. So the last thing that happens is we will discard the rightmost card from each row on the objective display. So all three of these are now gone, and we can now deal three more out to the top. Here we have a three resource red volunteer, which is a very powerful card. Nobody's picked up any of these triple resource ones just yet, but uh, I imagine we're all going to be somewhat interested in that. Uh, right here we have get a school running, which generates one book every time you evaluate your check marks. And lastly, we have repair food convoys, which lets you turn uh, tools into victory points when you run those check marks. It's now time to move on to the secure districts phase, and we'll be doing quite a bit of it, I think. I figure we may as well start from the top and move down. So that means we can first do this district right here. So we will, of course, remove all of the scouting tokens from that district. Uh, we can now see that the orange player has one, two, three, four, five uh, cubes surrounding it. So we can go over here and see that the orange player will generate seven victory points for this. That means they will go from 10 all the way up to 17. And now we can see that the green player has one, two, three cubes. Now that means we can look over here and the green player will get three points, even though they are not the one who secured that district. And finally, we have one cube and we will get two points for just barely being there. Next up, the orange player does have to pick one of their outposts and they're going to go with this one right here, which allows them to turn one tool into three money every time they run their check marks. So they can put this right over here and we can now move on to this district right here, which got surrounded by the green player. So we can see here that the green player has one, two, three, four cubes around it. So over here on the graph, that means the green player will get five victory points, bringing them up to 15. We can also see that the orange player has two cubes in there. That means they will get two points, and we have a single cube, which means we will also get two points. We are currently tied, so that means both of us go up to 19 points. And then green will deploy this outpost, which lets them turn tools into money. This can now go right over here, but we are far from done because we have two different districts that we were able to complete. Now, let's go ahead and clear all of these uh, scouting tokens off, and I figure we'll just score both of them and then bring both of the outposts out. 
So we can start up here. We have one, two, three, four, five cubes around this district. That means we will gain seven victory points. So we were at 19 and we can now go up to 26. And we can see that the green player is just barely in the corner over there. So they have one, which means green will get two victory points. And now down here, we have one, two, three, four. Now that is going to get us five more points and nobody is associated with that area. So things are really starting to go well for us. Uh, when we add five points to 26, we now go up to 31 and we're starting to get a pretty good lead over our opponents. We of course have to put two outposts out onto the map and I figure let's go ahead and put this one out. It lets us turn tools into money and we could then potentially use some of that money to uh, turn into more uh, batteries which are wild. And then, uh, speaking of that, let's do this one right here, which lets us turn uh, medical uh, supplies into batteries. I think having wild resources is definitely something that we'll be happy about. So we can add both of these right onto the map. And now we can move into the eighth and final phase where we are going to refresh our hands. And if we do, then we get to evaluate all of our checkmark actions. At the moment, the green player has six cards left in their hand, so they don't get to refresh their cards, uh, even though they'd really like to at this point. Next up, we have the orange player with only three cards in their hand, so they will grab the column with the most cards. That'll be this one right here. And I think for the first time in the game, uh, the players now have check marks that they can evaluate. So over here, we can see that the orange player will generate one uh, medical resource, and they will also generate three money uh, just for doing these check mark actions. So the three money will bring them up to four, and then they can grab that medical supply, which is currently the only one that they have. It looks like they have three more check marks that they could optionally evaluate. And this top one lets them spend one of their books. And I'll just pull it from off screen right here. So this was a book. And that will turn into one GPS token. So they can now add that into their supply. Uh, right here, we can see they can spend a tool to get three money, but they don't currently have any tools. But down here, they can now spend a medipack, which they just made, in order to get a battery. And they have decided to do that. This is easily evaluated. They can just scoot this right in there. And now it's wild. Lastly, it comes over to us, and we only have four cards in our hand, so we can look down here, and it looks like three is going to be our biggest stack. Uh, our stacks are nowhere near as big as our opponents because we're so spread out. Uh, our opponents are definitely thinking about trying to make that fourth action uh, happen for them now, but there's a lot of other considerations they have. Either way, we have now refreshed our hand, which means we do get to activate uh, all of our checkmark abilities. And it looks like our options are we can spend two money for a battery, we can spend one tool to get three money, and we can spend a medipack to get a battery. So let's start off by turning this medipack into a battery, and then we can use this battery as a wild to act as a tool, which means that will generate uh, three money for us. So we can remove this and gather three money, and then after that, we can spend two of that money back to the bank in order to get another battery. So that was a little bit of a complicated way to uh, turn one medical resource into wild and gain one money for the whole deal. We've now come to the end of the fifth round, so we can pass the starting player over here to the orange player. Uh, we're now starting off the sixth round, and as usual, we will roll the resource dice. So let's see what we get from them. And right off the bat, we do have two tools. So we can put that one paper over there and re-roll these. And we now have a food and a tool. All right, we can now all simultaneously plan out our cards. Now our goal for the round is to try and complete objectives, and I do think we could technically complete both of these uh, by doing the top one here and the bottom, but we would end with just one money and then we would have no objectives uh, for the next round because we cannot buy new objectives with just one money. So I don't think that's a good plan. So instead, I think let's focus on getting this organizing a uh, food convoys. That way we can make a food whenever we activate our check marks, which we can then use to help feed our politician. Now, in order to do this, we will need a yellow card next to a red card, and we already have a yellow card played, so we definitely want to play a red card down this round, and the red will make a food, so I figure let's go ahead and play that politician and use that food to put another cube out onto the board. Now, with that in mind, we have this part of the objective completed, but we do need seven money, and we currently only have one. So I figure let's use this mechanic here uh, that will get us five money plus one for every scout symbol showing in our hand at the uh, when we activate it, which is likely going to be two more. So this would be a seven money card, and that will be enough to cover this right here. And with that in mind, we are still effectively completing just one objective with just one money left over. So I figure let's use this mechanic here, and we can actually consume our battery as a tool in order to make three plus three or six more money. So we will have seven money total to buy more objectives. 
Now we of course have to put these out onto the various columns in our area, and we know that this red has to be associated with the yellow in order to meet up with that objective requirement. So we can put that right over here. And you'll notice that when we put a card over here, we will have two columns that have the same number of cards. And when we inevitably pull them back, we get to choose between the two. So I figure let's put our politician right over here. And then we can choose to grab this column back and then activate the politician again next round. And then between the two of these, I think this one is slightly more powerful. So we'll put it in this column right here so that we will gain access to it quicker. And we'll put this one right over here. So with that, we have now planned out this round. We can now move into the deploy phase and we will start with the orange player. It looks like they are going to send their two resource red volunteer out. They also have their doctor in play. And lastly, over here, they have their scout. They've decided to send the red volunteer out first, but they're going to use a transportation token to drive them over here so that they can generate two medical resources. Next up, they will play their scout and this lets them get rid of a gas or a book in order to grab a GPS token. So they will get rid of this book right here and take this token into their supply. They will also get two money for this action. These will get added into their supply, and the last thing they do is activate their doctor, and that is going to use one of their medication. And with that, they can now heal somebody from their hospital, and they've decided to heal their leader back. Uh, just like we've seen before, this is going to generate them points equal to the uh, endgame points for that card, so they will get three victory points right now. This means they will go from 19 up to 22. And now it's our turn to deploy all of our cards. And we already know our plan right here. We have just one red resource or uh, one red volunteer heading out and then a lot of these specialist actions. First things first, that red volunteer will head over here and make one food. And then this mechanic will get us three money and then we can spend this battery as a tool to get three more money. In addition to that, we have this mechanic, which will get us five money plus one for every scouting symbol we have in our hand. And you'll notice that the doctor does not have a scout symbol. You're never allowed to send the doctor on a scouting mission. So we have two symbols showing up. So that means all told, we will get five plus two or seven money for this mechanic. So between those two cards, we have just gained 13 money. The last thing we have to do is to activate our politician. We can now use this one food right here and then put a cube out onto the board on a location color of our choice. At this point, we have a pretty good stronghold in the bottom part of the map, and I think we should continue pushing that. We'll put this cube right over here so that we are just one spot away from completing this zone, and that is a five-node uh, district, which means that, that would be worth seven points, and I think we're probably going to be able to finish it this round, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Lastly, we have the green player, and it looks like they will activate their politician. Uh, they also have a double yellow resource volunteer, and then they have a single blue resource volunteer. They've decided to start with the yellow volunteer, and they're going to use a transportation token to move these down here to make water. Now, they need to buy that transportation token with one victory point, and the next thing they will do is send this blue volunteer out. Now, they're going to use another transportation token to move this one over here to the food zone, which means they go down to 15 points, which isn't great considering how far back they are already, but they are trying to uh, do the best they can, and they know that these actions will end up giving them more points than they are losing. Their last action involves activating this politician. That means they can spend this food right here, and they've decided to put this down onto that purple location up at the top. We can now move into the third phase, which is objectives. And unfortunately for the orange player here, they don't have any objectives that they can complete. Uh, they bit off a little bit more than they could chew with this objective over here as far as uh, trying to build these columns out before they got reset. And uh, at the moment, they haven't been able to satisfy either of these two options right here. Uh, so it's a pretty good setup turn for them, but they're not actually putting any cubes down on the board right now. This means we are now next, and I figure let's continue with the plan that we have already. Uh, we need to spend seven money in order to complete this uh, top part of this objective. So that is now gone. And then we have to have a yellow and a red in the same column, which you do have down here. So that means we can now put a cube right here, and that's going to generate one victory point for us. And I think we should go ahead and just cash this objective in and not go for getting both of them. That is a five victory point bonus if we waited, but uh, being able to generate a food this round is certainly good. And we can see that we only have three cards in our hand, so we're definitely going to be refreshing our hand. So I think let's go ahead and push that. Uh, so uh, first things first, we will of course get one victory point for this card, which brings us to 32. And then we can take the main reward for cashing this in, and that is to put a cube down on a color location of our choice. Uh, so we'll put that on the board, and we can now tuck this in right over here. And I figure there's no time like the present. Let's go right over here to that yellow spot, so we have now completed this district. 
It's now time for the green player to go, but before we jump into that, I would like to briefly fix something. Uh, I was going on the assumption that this was a two red and one yellow, but it's actually two yellow and one red. Uh, because of that, I'm going to just fix things just a little bit, uh, knowing that the green player definitely would have played this single yellow instead of this double yellow, and they also would have definitely put this card right here and this card right over there. This means they would have put one less resource down, and they actually would have just kept it on the yellow spot. So we'll give them the one victory point back. Sorry for uh, messing that up, but I think we're now back in a good spot for them. When we now come back over here, we can see that one of their emergency plans has them needing a victory point scouting tile, as well as a gas can scouting tile, and those are the two that they have right here. So that means they can now put this cube right here, and that will generate five money for them. We can add this right over here, and at this point they could cash out this emergency plan, but they've decided to hold on a little bit longer. It looks like they're going to try and eventually complete this A to A uh, objective. Uh, they do like the idea of getting that money, and they don't desperately need that cube down this turn. We can now move on to the fourth phase where we can scout. The orange player will start things off, and they have two of these GPS tokens. They can now grab one of these stacks or one of these face-up ones over here, and it looks like they've decided to take a peek over in this stack here. They have decided to go after one of these, so they can put the other two face up over there, and this one says if they get to 8 scouting ability, they can grab 2 uh, batteries. So the way they've decided to do that is by coming in with this team right here, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then they're going to use uh, 1 out of their 2 GPS tokens to get up to 8. So they can now go to the supply, and they can shuffle this up. They figure uh, only one of these cards is particularly bad for them, uh, so we can now see that this person gets injured, and it's going to be their yellow volunteer. After this successful scouting mission, they now get two batteries, so they have three batteries total at this point, and then they can, of course, add this into their supply. This is the second type of uh, scouting token that they have, so right now they're still just in the two-point uh, threshold in that area. Orange is now done scouting, so now we can go, but uh, it doesn't make sense with the number of cards that we have in our hand, and the green player is going to pass as well, so we can now move on. And the next thing we do is acquire new objectives. The orange player is going to start things off, and there are some good options here, but after thinking through their options, they decide they want to spend four to grab this one right here. Uh, they appear to have some pretty good reasons for it, uh, even though it does seem to be a bit expensive. So they can spend that five and get one in return. We are up next, and I figure let's spend three in order to try and grab this card right here. Uh, these triple resource cards are very effective. It does cost four resources, and we don't have any of those just yet, but I think we're in a pretty good uh, position to try and get those resources together. This means that the green player is up next, and they're going to spend three money in order to grab this really powerful mechanic. At this point, all of the cards are just two money each, and it goes to the orange player, and they're going to pass. So now it comes to us, and even though we do have four money left over and one slot, I think we don't really like the look of any of these, and we have some pretty good plans uh, ready for the next round, so we're going to pass, and then the green player is also going to pass. So with that, we've now finished out this phase, and we can now move on to cleanup, uh, where all the food and water get turned into resources, but currently nobody has any of those. Uh, people can now optionally discard an objective if they want to, and it is true that uh, the orange player right here is having trouble putting this objective together, but they still have an open slot over here, so they're, they're going to keep it around. And now the last thing we do for cleanup is we discard the rightmost objective cards out in the market. Since there's just one card in each, that means this will clear out like that, and then we are going to deal out nine new cards at this point, so it's going to be almost like the beginning of the game. At this point, we just have, it looks like, six cards left in the deck, uh, but of course there's quite a few cards we have to go through here, and once we go through that whole deck, we will finish the round and then play one more round. So we're getting into the uh, later stages of the game, but we're not quite to the end yet. All right, the next thing we have to do is secure the districts. This round, it looks like we were the only ones to do that, so we can remove these scouting tiles right here. We are also the only ones adjacent to this district, and we have five cubes there. So if we look up here, that means we will get seven points right now. So that's going to bring us from 32 up to 39, and it looks like our lead is only getting bigger at this point. So things are going pretty well for us. We, of course, have to put one of these outposts down into that district, and I figure let's do this one. Uh, that will allow us to spend gas to get two transportation tokens, and we have certainly spent a lot of points at this point uh, moving around our volunteers using those uh, transportation tokens. So we can add this right over here. And now let's move into the eighth round where we can refresh our hands. Orange is first, but it looks like they currently have five cards in their hand, so they're not at the four or less threshold. We are next, and we can see here that we have just three cards, so we are definitely at four or under. 
Now, both of these columns have three uh, cards in them, so we can choose between them. And I figure we definitely want to bring this one back so we can keep using this politician right here. And uh, after we do that, we can now activate all of our check marks. Now, this one is really simple. It's just going to give us one food, and I'll add this out to the board now. And now we have the option of spending two of our four money in order to get one um, uh, battery. Uh, right now, as far as these other options here, we do have a gas can we could spend to get some transportation tokens. But I do kind of like the idea of keeping that gas can because right now, this objective right here does require one. Now, if we look at our hand, we can see that we have just one card that makes us money. So I think maybe we should hold off and not spend this money on that uh, battery. I think it might be better to keep it and potentially have flexibility for uh, getting more objectives in the future. Uh, in particular, we can maybe start working towards this one right here because that is worth uh, 10 points uh, when we do it. And it e increases our threshold so that we will be checkmarking every single turn. Although at the moment, we seem to be checkmarking every turn anyway. So yeah, I think we are done with our checkmark actions. And now it's time for Green to go, and it looks like they have three cards in their hand, so they will be refreshing. This is definitely their uh, biggest column. It looks like there were a lot of cards over there. They can add this into their hand, and at the moment, they just have one check mark. It lets them spend a tool in order to get three money, and they have decided to do that. At this point, we've finished the turn, so we can now move on to the seventh round of the game, and we will start with us by rolling the resource dice. So let's go ahead and see what we get. It looks like we have no doubles. So we have a water, we have one medical, and then one food. The next thing we have to do is plan out our cards. And it looks like we have six cards in our hand to play with. Now we can choose four of these, and I think uh, right off the bat, we do want one of them to be this politician so that we can use that uh, food right there. Uh, so that's kind of in the bank. Uh, now, if you look over here, we can see that we have one gas already, so we just need two um, medication in order to get this objective done. And we do have this uh, double red uh, that is associated with uh, medication this round. So for just that one card, we are going to be able to finish this objective right here. So now we have two more cards, and we have this objective, which I'm not sure we're going to be able to make happen this round. When you consider that this requires books and tools, and none of the dice landed on either of those, so we'd have to spend uh, victory points to even uh, move these volunteers over there, I don't think we're even going to bother worrying about this. So with our other two cards, I think what we should do is uh, play this one red one to get us one more medical pack, and then we can spend our uh, doctor here to use that last medication in order to heal our leader back from our hospital. So I think this is a pretty good turn for us. We, of course, have to sort these cards out below here, and I don't think we particularly care about color matching at this point. Uh, this is a nice objective, but I think we have better things to run after. In particular, I think we should pretty much always put our politician down into the column that we are most likely to grab next, so we can put that right over there. Uh, and then uh, this one is two resources to the one, so I figure we'll put this one resource one over here because we don't mind not seeing that one for a while. And then I think two resources is probably better than the doctor's ability. So with that, we have now finished planning. At this point, I've just realized I made a mistake a couple turns ago when we completed this emergency plan. It actually has a check mark. I don't know why I just flipped it over like that. Uh, this should have been hiding out right over here, allowing us to spend one book to gain three points. Now, I don't think that would have actually happened, but uh, either way, I'm glad to have corrected it now. Now that everybody's done planning, we can start things off. Uh, we know that we're going to be doing the single red volunteer there. We've got this double red volunteer. We also have the doctor, and then lastly, this politician here. For the first time in a while, we're not going to be using any transportation tokens. So the double red volunteer will go here, the single one will go right over there, and now we can go ahead and have this politician come in. They're going to use this one food, and we can now add it out onto the board, and I figure we may as well just go right down here. That's going to complete this small district right here, and uh, that seems pretty good to me. <laughs> so now, moving on, the last of our cards is going to be this doctor. Now, uh, as we know, that is going to use one of our medical supplies. And then we can heal somebody out of our hospital, and it's definitely going to be our leader. And then we get to grab three victory points for that one, so we go from 39 up to 42. Next up, we have the green player, and it looks like they're going to use their leader. They're also going to have a double yellow volunteer, and then they have a double blue volunteer. The double yellow will get transported up here to the book section. That's going to cost them one victory point. And then the double blue will get transported over here to the medical place, uh, costing them yet another one of those victory points. Uh, Green's definitely not happy about sliding back, but they're trying to make these plans work. 
Now at this point, the last of their cards is going to be this leader. This is going to get them one battery, which they can add right into the middle, and then they can activate one of their check marks. But right now, um, their only uh, check mark they have lets them turn tools into three money, and they think they need this battery for other things. Lastly, we have the orange player, and it looks like they're going to activate their leader. They will also be doing a double yellow volunteer, and then over here we have a single blue volunteer. They'll start off by sending the double yellow volunteer right to the yellow spot, and the single blue right over there. And then the last one they will do is this uh, leader. Now this is going to get them one battery right into the middle. They have a big battery supply there. And then they can activate one of their check marks. And the one they've decided to do is getting the bank afloat. That will get them three money right now, which they can add right into their supply. That's going to finish out the deployment phase, so now we can go up to the objective phase, and we know that our plan was based around trying to get this one done, so that's going to cost us one gas as well as two medical supplies. So we can spend those right there, and we are now down to no resources out here on the wheel, and then we can add this card into our hand. It's going to be worth four points at the end of the game, and we can now add a single cube out onto a yellow spot, and I figure let's go right over here so that we are just one location away from completing this seven node spot. That'll be worth uh, 14 points to us. It'll give some points to our opponents as well. But either way, I think this is a really good district to close off and we are very close to doing it. Next up, we have the green player and they were able to make this happen this round. Uh, this is going to cost them three money and they do have two yellow and one red card going on. So right now they have five money. So they'll get two back right away, and they can now tuck this and, of course, uh, put one cube on the map as well as getting two victory points. They can put this out on any color of their choice, and they've decided to go right up here. They also get two points, which is going to bring them up to 16. And now they're going to complete this objective, which costs three books and three medical supplies. So here are the three books, and then they can spend these two medical supplies as well as this one battery. And with that, they have been able to complete this objective right here. It's going to be worth six points uh, to them at the end of the game. They can now add this into their hand, and they can put a cube out onto a purple location on the map. It appears they've decided to put it right up here, and they're now just one location away from connecting both of the A's on this very long chain. Uh, maybe this wasn't the best plan, but they are committing to it. Unfortunately, I feel like the green player has not been making the best decisions this game, but uh, this is going to be the way they go. And they are just one note away from completing uh, this spot right here, which is pretty good. There's quite a bit of points banked up over here for the green player at this point. Next up, we can move over to the orange player, and they are going to complete this objective. It's going to cost two tools and two medical supplies. And it appears they're going to use a lot of batteries to make this happen. Uh, they have one medical supply here, as well as a battery, and then two more batteries for both of those tools. Now, at this point, they will get two victory points for completing this objective, so that brings them up to 24. And then, of course, they can put a cube down onto a color of their choice, and they've decided to put it right over here. Now, once they have done that, they've actually connected uh, this B right here with that B right over there. Uh, so uh, before I get ahead of myself, I suppose, they can tuck this in. It lets them spend a tool to get three points. Uh, but moving on, they are now going to complete this bottom row on their emergency plan. Now, they completed this middle one a long time ago, but they've now connected both of the Bs. So they can add this cube right over here and generate five more money. They can now add this into their supply, and they do have the option of finishing out their emergency plan right now and putting a cube on the board. But right now, they're just one victory point scouting tile away from completing this top row, and they do like the idea of getting a victory point scouting tile. Uh, they do have a GPS token right here, so they're going to keep going with that. And now they're going to go ahead and complete this objective down here. Uh, we completed this many turns ago, and it's been really good for us. And the orange player has now been able to get over here, because if you look right down here, they have two yellow and two purple within this given column, and then they have exactly 10 money uh, in order to afford this. Uh, this is part of the reason they took that objective last round. Uh, they really needed to get a wild cube placement down to connect that line in order to make this work. Uh, without that, they were just one money away from making this happen. So they can discard all of these, and they can now take 10 points, and for the rest of the game, they get to play a fourth action card each round. So 10 points will bring them from 24 up to 34. It's now time to move into the scouting phase of the round. And since we're the starting player, we get to begin this off. Now, right now in our hand, we have one, two, three, four, five scouting power. But some of these cards are really rather good, so I'm not sure if we want to lose them. But I figure there's no harm in looking over here. Uh, right here in this stack, we can see there is a five scouting power to get two tools. We've got five to get two uh, fuel and five to get one victory point. 
Now, at the moment, we do have this objective, which is going to cost us two books and two uh, tools. So if we were to go ahead and do this, uh, we could complete this one right here, this round. We would get the two tools that we would need in the next round to complete that objective, which is certainly good. Uh, this would be the second of our tool um, uh, uh, scouting tiles, though, because we took one already. So that means we would flip this over, and it would not give us more points at the end of the game, but it would be plus one to our scouting ability uh, in future scouting actions. Now, effectively, we just need to weigh whether it makes sense to lose one of these cards uh, randomly to the hospital in order to get the two uh, tools that we need right now. Um, if we did that, we could potentially <laughs> oops, uh, lose like this card right here, which could potentially just give us the two tools that we need. Although, I suppose, actually, when we look at this dice breakdown chart, there are no tools on the yellow die, so maybe this is worth going for it. I mean, there's one tool over here on this card, so I think maybe we should push our luck. I mean, if somebody goes into the hospital, then we can always use our doctor to bring them back again, and when we do that, we do generate victory points. So, yeah, let's give it a go. Uh, we will complete this right here. That will generate two tools for us right away, and now we can press our luck and see what's going to happen, and it's going to be this one. It's uh, our scout. All right, well, that's a little bit of a loss, but I think we can uh, suffer that one okay. Up next, we now have the green player, and they have decided to check this stack right here. And it looks like the one they want to complete is right here. Now, this costs them, or it's going to require them, six scouting points in order to get five money. And, uh, oops, this one, of course, uh, should have gone over to our area. So, coming back to the green player, that means they need six in their scouting party, and they have one, two, three, four, five, six right here. So they can now shuffle this up, and one of these people will go over to the hospital, and it looks like it's going to be this mechanic right here. Uh, so uh, that's a little bit of a loss for them, but it's only a two-point card right there. So they will go to the hospital, and then, of course, uh, the green player will get to gather this. This is their third type of uh, scouting tile, which means they effectively just made one point there, but then, more importantly, they just got five money, and now they're actually going to have enough money to buy some more objectives. It's now time for Orange to scout, and they're going to take a look at this stack right here. And then they decide they don't want to scout any of these, so they'll put them back face down. Next up on the list, it's time for new objectives. We are the starting player, and we have exactly four money. And I think we should go ahead and spend all of this on one of these cards. Obviously, everything costs four right now. And the thing that we really want is a blue card, or of course a wild card location, in order to complete that big district on the bottom right corner of the map. Now, I think what we should probably do is just take this one. It's uh, not a very exciting card, but it's quite cheap. It's just one book and one tool in order to complete it. It lets us put a uh, blue uh, cube down on the board, and it gets us three points at the end of the game. Uh, this one obviously also gives, well, I guess two points here, uh, and it's a wild cube spot. It gives us another check mark ability, but I think this is the one we should go for just because it'll be so easy to complete, and it is the right color. Green is now next, and they've decided to spend four money in order to grab this objective right here. Next up, the orange player can go, but uh, they have no money, so they will pass, and then we are also going to pass due to having no money. So then we have the green player who will spend this three money right here, and that will allow them to grab this red achievement. Uh, that means they actually have just taken two of these uh, that have the red on it, but uh, they're still okay with that. At this point, nobody has any money, so everybody will pass. And now we can move into the cleanup phase. Now, once again, every food that gets lost in this phase makes two money, and every water makes one money, or you could spend two water in order to get one GPS token. At this point, the orange player has food and water, so this food will turn into two money, and they've decided they're just going to take uh, one money each for these instead of the GPS token. So all told, the orange player will get four money for this wastage. And now we can move into the secure districts phase. At the moment, there's just this district right here. Uh, it kind of feels like we're the only ones securing districts lately. Uh, so we can pull these off of the board. And then we can see that that's just three cubes, which is going to be worth three points to us. So we go from 42 up to 45. And nobody is sharing with us. We've done a really good job of hogging all of these points and not giving it to our opponents. The last thing we have to do is put an outpost out, and I figure we'll choose this one right here, which lets us uh, turn four money into two victory points. Uh, that's a pretty good exchange rate, because if you look over here, at the end of the game, every resource is worth one money, and every five money is worth one point. So four money to two points is pretty darn good. We can now move into the eighth and final round, where we can refresh our hands. Uh, we can see right here that we only have three cards, so that's definitely under the fourth threshold. That means we can pull the biggest stack right back into our hand, and we can now activate our check marks. 
Now the first thing we should do, I think, is to gain one food, and we'll put that out onto the wheel. You just have to trust me on that. And then uh, we currently have no money, but we do have two tools. Now I'll pull one of those tools back, and we can turn that tool into three money. Uh, so we can just add that right into our area real quick. And then as soon as we have this three money, we can spend two of that on this black market. Now that means we can put a cube down onto the battery spot. So we've effectively turned one tool into a battery, which is wild. And we have debited one money through that exchange. So once the dust settled, we have a battery, a tool, and a food over here. Next up, we have the green player, and it looks like they currently have six cards in their hand. Uh, so once again, they are kind of uh, regretting not having this token down. Obviously, that's a nice 10 points, uh, but also it means they refresh their hand once they are at six or less instead of four or less. And they would really like to pull some of these really powerful cards back in. But uh, so far in this game, the green player has not been able to put their plans together too well, unfortunately. Lastly, we have the orange player, and they only have two cards in their hand. Uh, so they're going to take this gigantic stack of cards right here. It's their biggest one. And they can add that back into their hand. And now they can activate their check marks. Now, the first thing they can do is just gather one uh, medical resource. And then after that, they're going to go ahead and grab three money from the bank. Next up, they're going to spend one of their medical supplies to turn it into a battery, which happens to be the one that they just put in here. And then they're going to spend one of their batteries as if it was a tool in order to gather three victory points. So that will bring them from 34 up to 37, and that's going to finish out their check marks. We've now reached the end of this round, so we can move into the eighth round of the game. It looks like the green player will be the starting player, and we can begin by rolling the resource dice. So let's go ahead and see what we get. Uh, we've got two doubles right here and then a water. So we can re-roll these, and now we have a book, and we have a food. Oops, I just realized that in the last round, we forgot to discard the rightmost card from each one of these rows in this uh, market. So we can get rid of those, and we now need to draw three more up here. So that means we have these going on, and there's just three more left in the draw deck. Okay, let's now all simultaneously plan out our turns. At the moment, we have these two objectives that we're going for, and they're actually really similar. They both require books and tools, and we currently have one tool and one battery. Now, one potential plan that we could do for this round is we could spend this double blue to get two books and this single blue to get a third one, and that would require all the books we need for both of these. And then we could use this one red to, uh, and then transport over here, losing a point, uh, to get another tool, and then we could have one, two, three tools. Now, with that, we would actually complete both of these cards right here, uh, and that would be certainly nice. But that also means that we would end with just one money, and we would actually have no objectives to go after in the next round of the game, which it's looking like will definitely be the final round of the game. Now, uh, doing this uh, plan has us losing a point, so I think maybe what we should do is go a little bit broader, uh, only complete one of these two, uh, probably this one right here so that we can get lots of resources, and then aim to complete this one on the next turn along with uh, something else that we are able to buy with a little bit more money. So with all that in mind, I think we are uh, definitely going to be continuing to use our politician. Uh, we've used them all game long to great effect. That'll be one of our four actions. Uh, and then uh, in order to complete this one right here, I think we should do this double blue. That will give us the two books that we need. And at this point, we actually have the two tools effectively that we need to complete this card. So at this point, we have, it looks like, two more cards that we can play. And I think we should probably just try to play towards getting uh, a decent amount of money. So one thing we could do is we could play this one down right here. Uh, that would get us one food, which could turn into two money for the following round. Although we would not actually have that money, I suppose, for the uh, objective purchasing phase right now. I suppose with that in mind, we should probably play our leader down. Uh, that'll get us one battery and it'll let us activate one of our check marks. And that will allow us to spend a tool to get three money. So we'll definitely put that person down. And then I figure let's go ahead and do this double yellow. Uh, we could just get a couple water, which will turn it into a couple money, which we could potentially use in the next round. Uh, also, I suppose one thing we could do is we could hold on to this and uh, instead play this card down like that. Uh, that would get us the book that we need in the next round, and it would just hang out there and be ready for us to use. Uh, yeah, let's go for that. And then we can save this one and potentially use it to better effect in the next round. So with that, we have now decided on the four cards we're going to play. And now we just have to lay them out in our area. 
Now, I suppose another uh, perk of only doing one of these two objectives is that means we will still be at four cards in our hand, so we will still uh, reset our hand and potentially use our politician yet again. We've done a lot of really great things. I think uh, a big part of our lead actually has come from us being able to utilize this politician so well. Uh, so let's put it right down here in the biggest column. And then at this point, I figure uh, this uh, leader is pretty flexible. We'll put him right over there. And then we can split these two up. I don't think we particularly care about the color matching at this point. Now that everybody's done planning, we can start with the green player. It looks like they're going to begin right over here with a double resource yellow volunteer. They also have their politician. And lastly, they have their big time mechanic over here. The first one they're going to activate will be their yellow volunteer, and they're actually going to spend two transportation tokens to bring them over here to make tools. Now that means they're going to have to spend one victory point for each of these, so the green player is continuing to go in the wrong direction here, but uh, they're pretty confident this is the right play for them right now. Now after they do that, they're going to activate this mechanic, and this will get them six money, and then if they spend one of these two tools, then they get five more money. So just like that, they have generated 11 money. And now the last thing they will do is spend five of this on making a battery. They can put this right out here, and with that, they can then use this as food in order to activate their politician right here, and that will allow them to put this cube out onto the map. Now they have a few different good options, but they've decided to go right over here, and that actually completes this district right here, but we can deal with that later. Next up, we have the orange player, and for the first time, they are doing four actions. Looks like over here they have their doctor. They also have a double resource blue volunteer. Over here they have a single resource red volunteer. And lastly, a single resource blue. They're going to start with their blue volunteers, and they're okay with having both of them head right over here and to make books. And then the red volunteer, they're going to have them travel over here and go to the tool section. Now the orange player still actually has two out of their initial five transportation tokens. So they can spend one of these, and so that won't actually cost them any victory points for doing that. At this point, they just have one more uh, person to activate, and that's the Doctor. And for this, they need to get rid of a Medipack, so they will use this battery right here as a wild resource to satisfy that. This means they can heal somebody from their hospital, and they're definitely going to grab this one right here. It has two points in the top corner, so they can take those points right now. So that's going to bring them from 37 to 39. We've now finished out the deployment phase. I forgot to move the token there. So now let's jump up to the objective completion phase, and the green player can start. Now the first one they want to do will be right over here. We can see that this will cost them four money and they have six, so they can get rid of this five right now. And then grab one back, so they now have two total. And we can see over here that they do indeed have two yellows and a red to match up with this. So they can cash this in. Uh, it's gonna add this into their hand and give them three points at the end of the game. Also, they can put a cube down onto a red spot on the map. Now, there are a couple good options for them to choose, but they've decided to go right over here. Uh, now, the reason they're doing that is obviously to connect this A all the way up with that A there. Uh, this cube will never lack and never actually score points for them, unfortunately, but they're still okay with moving forward with this. Speaking of that, we can now come over here to their emergency plan, and they have successfully connected both A's, so they can stick this cube right over here. This will get them five money as a reward, and now they have completely finished this one right here, and that's going to allow them to put a cube out onto the board onto a color of their choice, and they now have a second checkmark ability that they can use. After considering their options, they're going to put this one out onto this blue spot right here. Green is now done with their objectives, so we can move over to the orange player, and unfortunately it looks like they had to sacrifice quite a bit of tempo to get this fourth action going, and maybe that was not a good idea for them so late in the game, because right now uh, they don't have any objectives that they can complete because they weren't able to get any new ones last round uh, due to not really having any money. Uh, we can see that this requires two blue and a yellow, and they have two blue here, uh, but no yellow that is in that same spot. Uh, over here, they would require uh, to have a victory point as well as a book uh, scouting tile. And while they do have a book, they don't have the victory point one yet. So unfortunately, neither of these can be completed. We, of course, are the last ones to deploy this round. So we can reveal that we have a single blue. We've got this leader. We also have the politician. And lastly, we have the double blue volunteer. The first thing we should do is activate this politician so we can use this food right here and then add it down onto the map as a cube. And I think we should go onto this purple location right here. It seems like the green player is gunning to complete this zone, so I figure if we squeeze this in right over here, then we are likely to get a couple points for it. Next up, we have our blue volunteer, and they can head right over here and get a couple books for us. 
Moving on, we can send our other blue volunteer to get a book as well. And at this point, we just have our leader left. Now, the first thing they do will uh, get us a battery, and now we can activate one of our check marks. We're having a bit of a money problem right now, so I figure let's activate this one right here. That will let us spend one tool and get three money. We've got a couple batteries, but we do have a tool, so we can get rid of this one right here, and then the three money gets added into our supply. It's now time for us to complete objectives, and I figure let's go ahead and complete this one right here. It's going to take two uh, books as well as two tools. And it looks like we can easily afford that by spending these two books here, and then both of these batteries as tools. Now once we do that, we can add this into our hand, and it's worth four points at the end of the game. And we can now add a cube onto a red location on the map. And I think we should head right over here. Uh, that is yet another uh, cube into this uh, area that is likely going to score. I suppose one to two cubes is no real difference between those two, but I'm having a hard time finding another good red spot for us to go onto out on the board. Uh, we're pretty well saturated at this point. I suppose we could head right over here, but I don't think this central area is going to score by the end of the game. So we'll just put it right over here, and maybe we'll have a chance to put a third one into this area before it scores. Uh, that would give us a one-point bump anyway, but the biggest reason we did this was to try and get the points. We're now all done with our objectives, so we can move into the scouting phase. The green player can start things off, but they're not interested in scouting this round, so now the orange player can go. And it appears that they want to grab this one right here. Now that is going to need eight scouting points, but it will give them three victory points. And they can show their hand right here, and we can see that they have five. And then they also have one of these GPS tokens hanging out. So that is an extra three, which gets them exactly to eight. So they can now uh, bring this into their area. This is going to be the third different type of scouting token that they have. So they just went from two bonus points at the end of the game to three. And then they, of course, get three points for that tile itself. So that's going to bring them up to 42. Now, the last thing that happens is they do have to send somebody to the hospital. They get injured in this scouting attempt, and it appears it's going to be this mechanic. It's now time for us to scout, but I don't think we want to risk any of these really powerful cards right here. Uh, it doesn't really seem to make sense to me, so we're going to pass on scouting, which means we can move into the fifth phase where we can now buy new objectives. The green player can start things off, but they're actually not interested in spending their money. Uh, they have seven money total, but they're going to pass for now, so now the orange player can pick. And it looks like they want to spend two money in order to pick up this objective. So once they do that, we have cleared out this row. So now we can bring in uh, more cards from the deck. But as you can see, these are the final three cards of the game. Now, the moment you uh, deal out the final cards, that means we have triggered the end game. We are going to finish this round and then play an entire another round of the game. But uh, for now, we can actually bring in this uh, surplus uh, supplemental uh, deck right here. And uh, that can get added in so that uh, if more rows clear, we do have more cards to put down. But it's official now. The next round will be the final round of the game. So uh, Orange has now bought. So that means we have an option of buying a card now. And from these options, I think we want to spend three money to grab this one. It's pretty easy to accomplish. It gives three points, and this yellow might be able to allow us to score another district. So we'll add this into our area. We can obviously spend this money. The green player is going to pass again, and now the orange player has also decided to pass. So it comes back to us. We have just one money, so we are forced to pass. So we're now done with this phase. This means we can now move into the cleanup phase. Uh, we would have the food and water spoil, but nobody has any right now. Uh, everybody can optionally discard an objective, but nobody does, so that didn't happen this game, it looks like. And then the last thing we do is discard the rightmost card from the objective market. That means all of these can go away, and I don't think this particularly matters because uh, we will have one more buying phase, but I don't think anyone can actually acquire more objectives, knowing that the next round will be the last, but let's just go with it. We can now move on to the secure districts phase. In this case, it looks like this is the only district that got secured on this round. Uh, that means the green player will get to put an outpost down. It looks like they also have one, two, three, four, five cubes. That means they get seven points. So they go from 14 all the way up to 21, and they're still, unfortunately, really far behind. Uh, now, the orange player has three cubes that are on that area. So that means the orange player will get three victory points for this. So that means they have actually tied up with us. Green now has to choose one of these outposts, and they're going to grab this one on the off chance that they have extra money left over in the final round if they end up doing a checkmark action. Either way, they can now put this out onto the map, and that will finish out our district securing phase. So let's move on to the final phase of the round, where we can refresh our hands if we are at four or below. Green can start, and they have four cards in their hand, which means they are below the threshold, so they can now take their column with the most cards, and now they can activate their checkmarks. 
it looks like they can spend tools for points, tools for money, or money for points. And they've decided they're just going to do this one right here. They have one tool at the moment, so they will spend that. And then they will get three money for it. Orange is now next, and they have four cards in their hand, which means they can do a refresh. This is obviously the biggest column for them, and now they can evaluate their check marks. So they'll start right up here, gathering three money, and then this will get them one uh, medical pack, but then they'll immediately use that down here to turn it into a battery. After that, they can now use this one right here, which lets them spend one tool to get three victory points. And they are going to do that, which means they will go from 45 up to 48, and they're now in the lead. They're now done activating the check marks they want to do, so now we can go. It looks like we also have four cards, so that means we can pull back one of these columns, and it's going to be this one right here. So we can add that into our hand and then activate our check marks. And it looks like the first and only thing we can do is this one right here. That's going to get us one food, and I'll just put that right out on the board. And we can see that we have just one money. We don't have any batteries or tools to activate other stuff. So yeah, that's our only action right there which means that we have now finished out that round and we can now move into the ninth and what will be the final round of the game. It looks like the orange player will be the starting player and they can begin by rolling the resource dice. So let's see what they give us for the final round of the game. And it appears that we have a couple pairs here and then we have a couple pairs here and we now have, oh no, <laughs> more pairs. Wow, those going all over the place. Uh, at this point, we have now finally settled. It looks like we have the water, we have gas and we have medical. For the last time, we can now plan out our cards for the round. And we can look out here and see that we currently have one food, so I figure uh, let's go ahead and continue to use this politician. Uh, we have done a very good job of cycling this pretty much every turn. Uh, and then after that, we have three more cards that we can play. Now, if we look down here, the things that we need to try and complete these are we need two tools total, and we currently have none. Uh, we need one book, which we do have, and we're going to want one water. Now, I guess we could potentially just use this one right here. That will get us two water to satisfy this. And then we just need two tools. Now, one option that we do have available to ourselves is we could use this uh, triple right here and use one transportation move, uh, losing one point to go over here. That would get us three tools. And I believe that would be our third card. No, that's, yeah, yeah, our third card of the round. And we could then uh, use uh, two of those tools and have one remaining. And we can actually use a tool to turn into three money, which could potentially get us around to breaking over to getting another victory point at the end. I suppose the other option is we could just use this card to put two down, but I figure we may as well uh, get three instead of two. Uh, every resource that's out here is also worth one money, as you can see at the end of the game. So that's another thing to consider. So at this point, we have now done everything that we need to complete both of these objectives, as well as get our politician out, and we still have one more card that we can play, so we're in a pretty good position here. Well, considering five money is a victory point, I figure let's just place this mechanic out. That's going to get us five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine money when we play them out, so that's going to be a very good action. That's almost two points. So with that, we have now figured out what cards we're going to be playing, and now we just have to put them into the various columns, but I don't think that's going to matter. Uh, none of the objectives we're going for uh, care about what's in the columns. Uh, we never got around to doing this one right here. Uh, we're doing other things instead, so let's just go ahead and put them somewhat arbitrarily out because this is going to be the final uh, time we deploy all of these cards in the game. Now that everybody has done their planning, we can move into the deployment phase. We're going to start here with the orange player, and it looks like they have their uh, big mechanic going. They also have their leader activating. They've got a two-resource yellow volunteer, and finally, they have a two-resource red volunteer. To start things off, they're going to send their red volunteer over, and normally it would go here, but they're going to move it once up here to gather two tools instead of fuel, and they still have one of these transportation tokens left over from the initial five, so that's not even going to cost them a point to do that. Next up, the yellow volunteer will head over here and make two water resources, and after that, they're going to have their leader activate. Now this is going to get them one battery that they can put right there in the middle, and then they can activate one of their check marks. It appears they want to repair the food convoys, so that's going to cost them one of the two tools they just made, and that will give them three victory points, bringing them to 51. The last of their actions is this mechanic. It's going to get them four money, and if they spend a tool, they can get four more money, and they have decided to do that, so that's eight money total. So let's give them 10 and then put two back in the bank. And it looks like they have 16 money right now, which is probably the most anybody has floated at any given time at this point. We are now next. So let's go ahead and reveal. We show that we have our politician. We've got our two resource uh, yellow volunteer. 
We've also got our three resource red volunteer, and finally we have our mechanic. Let's start things off with our triple resource red volunteer, and we are going to transport them right up here so that we can make three tools. That is going to cost us one transporter token, which will cost us one victory point. And then after that, our double yellow volunteer will head over here and get us two water. Next up, we can activate this mechanic. It gets us five money plus one money for every scout icon in our hand. And if we look at our hand, we can see that we have four of those. So all told, we will get nine money for this card. We only had one, so let's go ahead and grab 10 and put this one back in the bank. The last of our actions is this politician. So let's use this food right here, and I think let's just put it right down here. Uh, that's going to complete out this district. I know we talked for a couple turns about using this objective to fill that in, but I found another good blue spot on the board for us. Lastly, we have the green player, and it looks like they have a double blue volunteer right here. They've also got a double red volunteer, and then lastly, they have another double blue volunteer. They're going to start off simply by sending a double blue volunteer here to make two medicine. They're going to do the same thing with their other one. And then their double red volunteer right here is going to uh, do a little bit of transportation. Uh, they're going to head from here over to the water area and get two water resources for them. They currently don't have any transporter tokens, so they can buy one for one victory point. We're now all done deploying, so let's move into the objectives phase. And it looks like the orange player is going to start off by completing this one right here. Now we can see that they were able to finally get two blue and a yellow within a column. They had to wait a few rounds to make that happen, and they of course have to spend four money. Uh, they can go ahead and get rid of this five, and then take one back. And then we can see that they can add this into their hand. It'll be worth three points at the end of the game, and they can now put a cube out onto a blue spot, and they've decided to head right over here. Next up, they're going to finally complete their emergency plan over here. They need to have a victory point and book... Uh, scouting token, and we can see they now have that combo. They've had this book one forever, but they finally have both. So this means they can cover this up and get five money as a reward, and then they can put a cube down on a location color of their choice and tuck this in. We can see that as a checkmark action, this will allow them to uh, spend one medical pack to get three victory points. When they look out to their options, they're going to put this down right onto this red location here. Finally, they have this objective, and it's going to cost three books and three water to complete. When we look back to the resource wheel, we can see that they easily have those three books, and then they have the three water with these two here, and then one of these batteries as a wild. So with that, they have now, uh, they're have now they going to get seven points at the end of the game. They can add this to their hand, and they can now add a cube onto a yellow spot on the map. In this case, they've decided to go way up here, and just like that, they've actually completed a district, which uh, they're pretty happy about, and uh, green is too, because they'll get a couple more points out of it. But either way, at this point, the orange player is now done with their objectives, which means that we can now go. Now, I figure let's just uh, complete both of these at the same time. They're both worth three points. Uh, we can see that this is going to cost us two tools, a book, and a water to do. And we were definitely able to get all of those resources together. Next up, we can add these into our hand, and we can put a cube onto a blue spot and a yellow spot. Now, the reason this is going to work out pretty well for us is because over here, we have a blue and a yellow. So we can go right here and right there, and we have just secured uh, what's going to be our sixth district of the game. So we've done a very good job of securing. We've now come to the green player, and they have just one objective. It's a pretty big one, though. Uh, this one is going to cost three water and three medical packs. Now, before we jump over, they are going to spend uh, five of their money in order to make one battery. And then we can see that they have the three water with this battery right here, and they have the three medical packs. In fact, they have four medical packs. So all of this can now go away. Uh, they can add this into their hand, and it's worth seven points at the end of the game. And most importantly, they can put a cube down onto a red location, and they're going to put it right over here. So they have completed this uh, six point or uh, six uh, node district, which will be worth 10 points. So a pretty good action for them. We can now move on to the scouting phase. But I can tell you right now that nobody is particularly interested in doing this. Uh, nobody really built up a particularly good scouting engine, which is something you can do while you're playing this game. Uh, so for us, the risks of losing somebody worth more points than uh, the benefits of pulling a token back uh, don't really make sense. So we will pass on and now enter the new objective step where we could buy new objectives. But there's no reason to do this. Uh, there's uh, no benefit to having objectives uncompleted at the end of the game, and you do get points for having money, so we're all going to pass on doing that, and then we can go right into cleanup, where our food and water will waste. 
At this point, there's just one water around, so this is going to go to us, and we just get one money for that. So uh, who knows? Maybe that'll be just enough to push us over to another point, but either way, one money is better than nothing. The last thing we would normally do in cleanup is discard the rightmost cards, but uh, that doesn't really make sense. We are not going to be buying anything else in this game, so let's move on to the secure districts phase. And it appears there are four of these to process. Now the first one will be right up here. Uh, this is going to be the orange player. They have three of their cubes, which means they will get three points. And the green player has two cubes, so green will get two. So green goes to 22, and orange will go from 51 to 54. Orange has to put an outpost down, and they have pulled this from the four money to two victory points checkpoint spot. So they can add that right here, and now we can process this spot. Now the green player was able to fully surround this one. We can see that green has six cubes. That means they will get 10 points. So they will go from 22 up to 32. And we can also see that the orange player has one, two, three, four, five cubes in this area. So that means orange will get seven points. Now it looks like they were at 54, so they'll jump up to 61. Green can now put an outpost down and they're gonna pull it from the one medical pack to battery spot. And now we can move on down here. Now it looks like we were able to surround this so we can get rid of these tiles here. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cubes. So that is the maximum. That's gonna get us 14 points. We were at 44, so that means we will jump to 58. Next up, we can see that green has three cubes adjacent to this district, so that means they will get three points. So they go from 32 up to 35, and lastly, the orange player has one cube, so they will get two points for that, bringing them from 61 to 63. We can now put our fifth and final outpost down onto this location and move to the final district that we're going to score. Now these will all get removed right here, and we can see that we have four cubes adjacent to that district. That means we will get five points right now. It looks like we were at 58, so that is going to bring us up to 63, and we're tied with the orange player. And then we can see that the green player has one cube uh, that's adjacent to that district, so they will get two more points, bringing them to 37. Now at this point, we are out of these uh, outposts, so the rules say to just put a cube of your color into that zone to show that it has been secured. At this point, we can now move into the eighth and final phase. This is where we can refresh our hands if we have four or less cards in our hand, but everybody has six or seven cards, so uh, I don't really need to show you. We can just say that we have now finished this out, and with that, we've now come to the end of the game. This means it's now time to calculate final scores, and it's all summed up down in this little box. The first thing we do is we will all cash in all of our resources for one money each. So it looks like we have one resource, so we get one money, uh, orange gets one, and green gets one money. After doing that, we can now cash out our money at a 5 to 1 rate. It looks like we ended the game with 12 money, so we will get 2 points, which is going to bring us up to 65. Green ended with 6 money, so that means they are going to get 1 extra point. And it looks like Orange ended with 18 money. They were not super efficient, I think, there at the end. Maybe they could have done things differently. But either way, they can discard these to get 3 points, which is going to bring them up to 66. The next thing we can do is count up all of the points that we have on our cards. Uh, the only restriction is we don't count points for objectives we haven't completed, and we don't count points for anybody who is in the hospital. Now, it looks like we ended the game with four cards in the hospital, but they were all single uh, victory point value, so we're not too uh, sad about that. So we can now go through all of these cards and count up the numbers. When we add all of that up, we get 39 extra points, so that will bring us from 65 all the way up to 104. Next up, we have the green player who was able to get even more points in their deck. They have 45 points here, so that means they are going to go from 38 all the way over to 83. Lastly, we have the orange player who has 36 points in their card, so uh, less than both of their other opponents. So that means they will go from 66 all the way up to 102. The very last thing we score is going to be the number of different scouting tokens we picked up throughout the game. We can see here that we picked up four different types and then one duplicate. You don't get any bonus points for the duplicates, and we just look over to this graph, we can see that four is going to be worth five extra points for us. So that means we will go from 104 up to 109. Next up, we have the green player who is able to get three different types. That means they will get three bonus points, which will bring them from 83 up to 86. And then it looks like the orange player also had three different types, so that will be three bonus points, bringing them from 102 up to 105, and that is going to be the final score for the game. It looks like we were able to pull off a win with 109. Orange was pretty close behind us, especially considering how many rounds we had four actions to the orange player's three, uh, and then unfortunately the green player lagged a little bit behind over here in third place. And that is going to complete one full three-player game of Blackout Hong Kong. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. I have to admit that in the middle parts of the game, I was starting to be concerned that us as the white player were just going to run away with the game. It seems like we had a really big lead and we were making a good use of the extra action that we had versus our opponents. But I was pretty happy to see that at the end of the game, the orange player was able to swing back around and they only lost the game by a handful of points. It was very close there at the end. Now, unfortunately, the green player seemed to do a bunch of things that they probably shouldn't have, and I think uh, maybe you can take from that as an example of how to play Blackout, but not necessarily play it well. Uh, I, as the green player wasn't trying to play poorly, but it seemed like I kept being kind of lost in the weeds as I was uh, chasing things like trying to connect the two cities, but when you do that, the only benefit is you get five money, which is nice, but you don't want to um, define your whole strategy around that, and I think that the green player probably should have uh, cut off their losses at a couple points and tried to change things up, because obviously they they did okay, but they weren't really close to the other two players up there at the front. Now, uh, there is obviously a ton of things going on in this game, and I was trying to show you as much as I could, but there's just too much to show really in one playthrough. Uh, like, I would have loved to show you what a strong scouting strategy looked like, where uh, somebody got a lot of the scouting cards and maybe um, was able to flip over a bunch of scout tokens so that they had ongoing extra scouting perks, because I don't think at any point in this game anybody uh, did a scouting token for the bottom action or the bottom reward, which usually gives you a lot more stuff and a lot of points. And honestly, this is only my second play of the game, and uh, so I am looking forward to playing it again in the future and maybe trying out that strategy if it's something that uh, pans out. But that's just one of the uh, many uh, ways, I think, that you can um, take this game uh, that did not necessarily get shown in this video. Uh, another one is obviously that uh, bonus that you can take that gives your threshold for uh, reclaiming your cards and makes it 0 to 6 instead of 0 to 4. Um, that can be very effective at uh, giving you more checkmark activations and I was a little bummed that it never made sense for any of the players in this game to go ahead and get that. A couple were close there at a couple moments, but it never did end up actually happening in this play, and as much as I would have liked to have shown it, it was hard to uh, shoehorn it in. So uh, in this playthrough, it just didn't happen, but it uh, definitely happened in the first play of this that I did, and I'm sure I will see it in future games. So I think that is going to wrap up all of my thoughts about this play. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support these videos, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button down below as well as the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.